Josh Fierstein here. So I'm going to be really open and honest with you about some stuff that's going to be a little bit embarrassing for me, but I think it's going to help revolutionize your life. So here we go. A couple of minutes ago, some really gorgeous young men start getting naked. I'm talking flawless. And I start getting a little bit worried because I'm fat. I'm overweight. It kind of got me to thinking you and Chris and Mark look at you. They look at you in disgust. And yet Chris told me, well, I'm beautiful nonetheless. Chris challenged me to embrace it. Mark. Chris told me, I promise it's going to be the sweetest moment that you will ever experience in your life. And here we go. Mark blew my cock in my mind. I grabbed a hold of Mark's cock. Chris starts crapping on my face and I ate like it was cotton candy sugar coated cake. Chris starts positioning me for inside of me with icicles. I start coming like a cat monkey orangutan. Chris and Mark laid their hands on the um, they wrapped it up inside of the Bible and start smoking. It was sick and disgusting. I loved it. Now lay there in the bedroom floor, snot coming out of my nose. Marks come running down my face, uploading a video to World Star Hip Hop to BBC World News. They told me that if I ever posted one of these videos again, they were going to kill me. Warning, the Drunken Peasants podcast is full of comedic exaggerations, independent thought, insensitivity, and other offensive content. We strongly urge all viewers and listeners to keep their brains and their skulls throughout the entire duration of this podcast. Failure to do so will result in immediate death. If you wish to support this podcast, there are several ways to do so. First, you can sign up for a free audiobook trial at audibletrial.com forward slash drunken peasants. Audible is the foremost seller of audiobooks today with hundreds of thousands of titles to satisfy all manner of tastes. Second, if you shop on amazon.com, please use the Amazon affiliate links in the description section of this video. Every purchase you make helps to support this podcast's existence. Third, please peruse our merchandise and see if if any of it strikes your fancy, we sell a lot of t-shirts, so we must be doing something right. One more thing before I go. To make an official submission to the Drunken Peasants, whether it be a video for one of our segments, or fan art, or a picture of you wearing one of our shirts, or anything you think we might want to use on the show, that stuff needs to be sent to the Drunken Peasants Facebook inbox. Please do not send correspondence, as this will be deleted unread. With all that shit out of the way, it's time to begin the show. What the fuck are you talking about, atheist? It's okay. You're nothing, okay. KJ. You're garbage. Okay. I just want to be light. You're garbage. <laughs> and now, here are your hosts, Ben and TJ. We're doing live. We're doing live. Fuck it. Doing live. Fuck Hello, it. welcome suck. to the Drunken Peasants Podcast, episode 240. 240, yeah. shit. Yeah, 240. I've been doing this show too long. Time to quit. All right, All right goodbye. Bye, TJ. See y'all later. See ya, man. Smoke weed hey, good run, day. dude. <laughs> so, TJ has quit the show. Yeah. Good fucking riddance, I say. <laughs> actually, good fucking riddance. I feel relieved. <laughs> I, I, well, while TJ's gone, it was funny. He's like, he was telling me, like, yo, I think like about two weeks ago, oh, I'm done smoking. Smoking's a thing in the past, and, uh... So we have here. Could it be? Oh, a pack of TJ's favorite cigarettes. Oh shit! Are you gonna are you gonna like tempt him with them or something? Is that why you have them? Oh, it's, you have to tempt TJ. It's like oh. it's nothing. Oh, you're back. Oh, oh man. man, look. Look at some so of these cigarettes you don't the, smoke. By the way, there's a new uh, link to the DP Wiki. It's in the description down below. So now on the DP Wiki, you have to put that TJ quit <laughs> for like a minute and a half, and then he rejoined the show. TJ left and came back to the show. He was formerly a host, and then he came back. He's back. So Last week, I want to remind TJ everyone. Shut the fuck the up, show. TJ. You're, you, you know what? You, Doesn't matter. You know what? Now when you leave, back to you're fired. TJ, TJ, when you leave, you have to start at the bottom right. when when you come back. All so right. now <coughs> you're at the bottom of the heap. We're the bottom. Even wrong. Paul outranks you yeah, now. Paul, Shit. Paul tells you what to do. Now. Anyway, I made a mistake in leaving. The private show is coming up. Uh, the the private show and the Patreon hangout is coming up this Sunday. Yeah, we were originally gonna do the hangout today, but we got a few complaints from people who was like, well, fuck this weekday shit, so we're going to do it Sunday. Yes. So you still got a chance to make it doing it Sunday. Speaking of Sunday, on uh, Sunday the... 
20... What is it? 29th? 29th. Yeah, Sunday the 29th, we're going to do the next Drunken Peasants meetup at Seattle. Drunken Peasants fucking take over Seattle. Yeah, we are taking over Seattle. At the Music Aquarium. Yeah, it's a place called the Music Aquarium. We will be at the Music Aquarium. Show up. Got to be 21 or older. You guys know the drill by now. Yeah, let us know yep. if you're coming. We got our um, little uh, Facebook thing. Yeah, link down, down below. Let us know. It's always helpful to know how many people we can expect. So RSVP if you are coming. Invite oh, people you think I'm might coming. also enjoy coming. Uh -huh. Um yeah, fucking let us know if you're coming to the Drunk Peasants uh, May It's 29th, short notice, sell. but Sorry. it's going to be fucking awesome. 11 days you got. That's not that short of a fucking notice, you know? Eh. It's shorter notice than we usually give, but fuck it. All right. Next thing, the most awesome thing. The best t-shirt of all time. The manatees, macaroni and cheese, individuals love our situation. This, this shirt, shirt is lost. Designed or by Super Wheatley. Yes. And there's and a link. Super Wheatley down there. Yeah, link that shit. Best artist ever. Um, the manatee t shirt. I think that a certain individual is already trying to sue us over this situation. So get I don't even while know who you can. You know, I don't even know who you're talking about. I don't about. know who you want to talk about either. No idea. Some guy, some crazy dude that thinks this is based on him. Uh -oh. I don't know. No. Lunatic. It's based on manatees. Yeah, we love manatees here at the show. Manatee is like the official mascot of the drunken peasants. So yeah, check out get the manatees shirt. Official manatees brand macaroni and cheese. If we sell enough shirts, got, you know we're going to sell actual mac and cheese. I have, I have a special announcement, too. There's a link down below where if you get the fucking shirt now, if you get it fucking now, now. you save $4 on the fucking shirt. Wow. A savings of $4. That means you save $4. It's like free shipping, basically. Yeah. Get that shirt. It's insane. You need the man tees shirt. It's going to be the greatest shirt. It is the greatest shirt we've ever done. It's better than all other shirts. I guess we're calling people now. Some people. Let's get people on the show. Oh, Zigo. Zigo. Hey, uh, hey TJ. What Hello? do you want, faggot? What do you want, uh, Paul? Since uh, since I now have rank over you. Oh shit. Yeah. What's up? Um, Hello? I'm gonna I'm gonna need hey, you to take you? care of some things. Uh, hi, uh, hi, Jacqueline. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, Jacqueline Glenn is here too. Oh, hi. It's already live. How's everyone doing? Yes, it is. It's always live. Live! This show never fucking stops, ever, for even a split second. Well, hello, then. Yeah. Paul, you have some, some directives for me, you said, now that you're above uh, me? You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll call you later and delegate some stuff, since you're now at the bottom of the barrel, because you quit. Paul, I order you to quit and then come back so that you're below me no. again. No. Nope. Can't do that. <laughs> Can't do that. Sorry, TJ. Fuck this. Sorry. Yeah, garbage. <laughs> this is the worst episode ever. Well, I guess two thirty-eight was worse. Hey, TJ, I'm a little, I, lame I'm a little thirsty. Uh, uh, why don't you grab me a drink, TJ? No, <laughs> you don't get nothing. <laughs> TJ, grab me a drink, TJ. You're hey, don't touch me. Well, to fire you again, TJ. That's sexual TJ? harassment. And I don't have to take it. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you said two thirty-eight was the worst episode. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Scotty and his. Oh, you belong in a museum, TJ. It was the greatest episode. Hello, of the so, uh, hi, Jacqueline. Hello. <laughs> um, I wasn't sure if there were certain things that you guys wanted to talk about, uh, but the reason no. I wanted to come on is that, like, a couple days ago, I, I thought this was pretty funny. I was at the grocery store, and this guy came up to me, and he was so excited to meet the Amazing Atheist. He's like, I love your channel. I love all your videos. The Amazing Atheist is my favorite channel. I was like, uh, thank you. And then I explained to him that there were two different channels, but he, I guess, we look alike to the point where he thought that I was TJ. So we I'm are hotter, twins. though. <laughs> I'm way hotter that, than that. That is bizarre. Why would? How could anyone mistake you? What? So, what? I don't, I, they Jacqueline not, Glenn even plagiarized my appearance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, shit. I, uh, I've done some some body modifications now. We actually look quite similar. Yeah, so. shit. Well, <laughs> she's had hair implanted all over her breasts. So, uh, <laughs> Paul, you had uh, you fucking put out a pretty mean video against Jacqueline one time. 
I didn't uh, see. Yeah. Okay, I need to probably watch. Yeah, see the thing. Okay, so my no, no. It, what happened was he was he watched. Uh, he was doing like a, a hangout, I think, and someone sent him a video of you and two of your friends watching some kind of transgender prank or something like. A it woman was, uh, has. Oh, that yeah. one. I was thinking yeah. that it was probably going to be, once I said to my friends, I thought you were going to talk about the women on YouTube video because that one's been getting a lot of hate recently, but I've responded to that one enough, I think. But uh, yeah, that's. I didn't see no, your video. Yeah. This was a uh, while back and, and people threw the video at me and I, I, I responded to it. It was, uh, it seemed strange to me because, you know, like you seem to think that like the guy's reactions to it were indicative of some kind of sex sexism or transphobia when I can imagine um, you I don't I don't know what your sexuality is Jacqueline I don't know if you're straight or gay or bi or what what I'm straight Born okay straight. so <laughs> like like if if there was a dude that you were dating for a while or a dude like approached you and you oh, went out yeah. to coffee with him or something and he pulled down his he, pants you know like like you you yeah. were attracted to him and then he pulled down his pants and there's a vagina there I think your reaction would be very similar if not the same than some of the dudes that were weirded um, out by the dick. Yeah, I, I don't know about that for sure, though. I've actually had this conversation with a couple of my friends, and we've kind of done the whole, well, what would you do if you, you know, were into somebody and then found out that they were, you know, not what you thought? It's kind of hard to whip know. out a pussy, though, you know? <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't whip out a vagina. But, you know, know what? I, I lived with a, a girl who did that, so it is possible. Um, you can, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Neat. Was, yeah, uh, but no, I I don't know how I would react because I haven't been in the situation. But I would like to think that I'd be gracious. Situation. About it. Okay. I know. I know that people. You know. I, the thing is, is I have very very close friends too. In fact, that are uh, female transgender, and th I, I counsel them through a lot of things. And I guess that's why I was so easily. Um, you know, hurt by this type of thing just because they were hurt and I kind of just mirrored that. But I think that, you know, I get people's point with that video. That was that was quite a while ago. Kind of forget what that Isn't that, that really kind of like, isn't that kind of really one of the major criticisms of you and your channel, though, is like the the whole mirroring other people thing, like not even just outright examples of like the plagiarism stuff, which we don't need to hammer on all day, but like you always kind of like had that people pleaser mentality on some level of like you become well, sort of chameleon like no. reflective of those around no, no. you. I mean like okay, I get I get to a degree I, I do like to make people like happy, especially if I see a friend who was depressed and hurting. I thought I could make that video and cheer them up because they'd see someone defending them. And a lot of people have like seen that video and like wrote to me and said that I've gotten two responses saying either A, it helped them, or B, they are transgendered and they don't need help and they took offense almost to that type of thing, which I understand too. Uh, so I've kind of backed off of that whole topic. I did recently make a video <coughs> about the whole transgender bathroom issue, uh, but yeah. I did not take the same approach. I was like, you know what, I'm going to do this differently because I want to say my piece on it, but I think the whole thing is ridiculous. So instead of taking it seriously, I'm just going to actually say how I feel about it, which is that the whole thing is just stupid and ridiculous. And that's you kind should of just, my stance on the video. You should just get like a big dildo and like hollow it out and then go like <laughs> into the men's restroom and like piss in the urinal and see like how people react. I think they would know it's not a real penis. <laughs> well, they're not going to be. I don't think most guys are like like staring intently at the penises yeah, around them. Like, going on? let's make sure these are all real. Notice how he said <laughs> most guys don't yeah, do that. Yeah, TJ does that for I sure. I get it, yeah. <laughs> Maybe someone else can do that. I don't really want to go to a urinal, but I get your point. Yeah, uh, but mean, it, it, it seemed to me that the video was not really about transgendered issues, though. It was more about straight guys not being into dick. Like I'm, I'm a straight guy. Well, no, and there, there was I, one guy. I, I, I have. Go ahead. No, no. I was just saying, there was one guy in that video who I actually I think I I remember saying something that nice about him because I thought he handled it really really well. Um, you know, and I, I think like the the thing to me in that video was that I it wasn't so much the guys reacting, even though like I I did think that some of them handled it poorly. Just you know, you just try to be nicer to people in general. But my problem was more with the people who made that video and edited it in a certain way that would make it seem like ugh, like these types of people are disgusting. That was the only, that was like my main point that I wanted to get out there that you know you shouldn't look at somebody who is transgender and be like ew. <laughs> Uh, and that's pretty kind of depends on what they look like, man. I don't know. Um, well, I mean, just for that reason alone, I didn't want it to be, you know, looked at in like a way that those people are disgusting. I mean, like, there's just certain my, people. There's certain people that just look disgusting, though. Like, you know, regardless. 
I mean, you know, everyone has those judgments of like you're going through like the Walmart or something and there's like you know, a, a Paul's ego sized man walking around <laughs> with, his, like, with half of his ass hanging out or something, <laughs> yeah. you know, and you're okay. like, oh, I mean, like, Jesus. If people, if people no, no. Like kind of together, that's one thing, but I don't, I don't look at anyone and be like, you know, I don't think anyone is just disgusting unless they haven't showered in weeks and, like you said, they're not dressed properly. Or something. Like, but, Shut you know, up. I, just, I, I don't I, go honestly, for weeks I, without showering, just days. I, I see a little bit of beauty in everyone, and I think the fact that we look different is a good thing. That's just. Yeah. Me. Beauty and everyone. I, I see ugliness in all of them. Every, the, the entire human race is a cesspool of shit. But, um. Well, I'm, yeah, you're a misanthrope, so that makes sense. It, yeah. But, uh, as, as for the women in YouTube video, I remember being annoyed with it at the time, but now I really can't remember much about it. I've the only. The only. The only scene. Yeah, the only scene I remember from it was when someone says to you, like, you gotta look, you know, you gotta look in 200 YouTube channels to find the top 20 women, and you're like, that's embarrassing. That's yeah, disgusting. That. But, I mean, like, the thing is, it's, it's like so many of those channels are not really men or women, you know? Yeah, I or, looked at like, a lot of those later. I, looked, I mean, well, you know what? I was sitting there, and I, I did not research the top 200 YouTube channels before I was asked this or line maybe of they said Maybe they said vloggers. I don't even remember, but it, it was pretty crazy. I don't know. Yeah, it seems to me like I, there's plenty of fucking popular female vloggers. And also, they, I mean, like, one of the things that I, I thought was kind of dishonest about that video, uh, that now that I recollect, is that, like, if, you, if you're out there seeking out advertisers and stuff, female, like, advertising that's geared towards women is, like, always, 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 like, way outperforms the men's stuff, especially if you run, like, a makeup channel or something. There's so many products they want you to shill, and so much money they're willing to pay you to shill it. Um, you know, whereas, like, no, a channel like point. mine... A channel like mine, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't bang down my door with offers, you know. I mean, we do get offers, obviously. Our fans hate it whenever we fucking have a sponsor. They're like, "What? You guys try to make money doing this? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> you!" <laughs> there are some. I, just, I recently did an Audible uh, brand deal, and, and people were pissed in the comments. And I'm like, "I'm sorry, I have to make money." But I guess you guys get that. <laughs> People do oh, get very yeah. pissed off. Oh, there, there, there was one time with TJ with Airbnb, like they like like yeah you're fine. And then they looked at they looked at his channel like the amazing atheists are like no, no atheists don't want how like to rent things. Yeah, when atheists, atheists travel. Don't read books. No, they don't. <laughs> obviously, obviously they don't. Yeah. Oh man. So uh, we got some we, we we got some segments here, Jacqueline. You're gonna, you're about to learn some shit. It's gonna be incredible. Right. We got an info. People said our show was too lowbrow and not informative enough, so we added the much loved information. The drunken peasants. Now with 100% more information. All right. Time to learn something. Yeah. All right. We're gonna learn something, and the way we do this is we go to Wikipedia and press the random button. <laughs> All right. Okay. Today we're learning about the Veil Nebula. The Veil vale Nebula is a cloud of heated and ionized gas and dust in the constellation Cygnus. It constitutes the visible portions of the Cygnus Loop, radio source W78 <laughs> or Sharpless 103. Cool. Next on Sharpless 103, yeah. uh, a large but relatively faint supernova remnant. The source supernova exploded some 5,000 to 8,000 years ago, and the remnants have since expanded to cover an area roughly three degrees in diameter, it's about pretty, six times the diameter. Yeah. It's pretty awesome looking. It does look pretty cool. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Hubble telescope captured several images of the nebula. The analysis of the emissions from the nebula indicate the presence of oxygen, sulfur, and hydrogen. This is one of the largest, brightest features in the X-ray sky. September 24th, 2015, new images and video of the Veil Nebula were released with an explanation of the images. So, fuck yeah. Yeah, we, we just learned something. Veil Nebula! Yeah. Make it sound evil. It's the Veil Nebula. He turns everything into a song. Where oh. everything. darkness always reigns. My favorite imp information segment is still the the valley in that one country that has a lot of bananas. Sha Chi. Or what, what was it like? Uh, I can't remember. <laughs> Sha Jin Something. I don't know. I like the mosquito. Sha I like the one with the mosquito. That was the best yeah, one. Yeah, I like the mosquito one the best. <laughs> uh, anyway. 
Next, next, we're on to yet another segment that. We'll oh, do you know here. what? I don't have that. I don't. Hold oh, you're, oh you're Ben is I a know. piece of Ben shit. was drinking last night. That's why this is all. Ben's like always this. drinking. Always drinking. When does he ever stop drinking? Never so. When do I stop? Uh, you're when, a damn like, drunk. When I <laughs> when I sleep. You're a drunkard, Ben. All right. All right. Whatever. Let's, we'll try. Uh, we'll try two of them. Here we go. Um, oh yeah, I gotta play the intro. This game is called Troll or Not a Troll. We are going to watch a video, and then everyone will weigh in, including you, Jacqueline, so pay attention on whether or not this wait. person is a troll or not. You must decide. For years, ah. drunken peasants fans have thought Brett Keen was a manatee, but I witnessed with my own eyes Brett Keen eating a Big Mac. That's impossible. Manatees are herbivores. So, who is Brett Keen? Well, let's start with who all he knows. Who could it be? First, let's take out all the Christians. Everyone knows Christians never lie for their own benefit. I'm going what? to cross out Jim Ass, because even you though he's the master of trolling... Yeah, th this is a troll. troll. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible. This is a weak-ass troll. Yeah, not yeah. Really ah! Weak-ass motherfucking right. troll. Um, I think this one's probably even just... As, I would say this one's just as obvious, too. Alright, okay. let's take a look. Alright. Hey guys, once again, I am looking for a girlfriend, but now I got a chest, I got a six pack, and I am back to tell you that no chest, no sex. So I am back and I'm looking for a girlfriend, alright? <laughs> I am looking for a girlfriend. So if you know a girl who is single, tag her right now, because I am looking for a girl to sleep on my body, to touch my six pack, <laughs> Feel my That's chest, so and I want a girl to go to the movies with me, hold hands with me, and have <laughs> sex with me. So if you know a girl who can resist and not resist my sexy body, so troll, right? Yeah. Yep, uh, troll. Uh, troll. Uh, I, 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 this guy's number? You gonna say I not a troll? Yeah, you gonna say I not? You're gonna make a case for not a troll, huh? I think this guy's making a genuine plea for a girlfriend here. I don't see. I don't see why you guys would cast aspersions. I don't know. I think he's a troll. troll. Once he starts three. saying lay on my body. You know what? I mean, look at <laughs> Paul. Paul Paul would know this. Well, it's still two to three, so troll. Fuck oh, it's bullshit. Guys. Not a troll. Fuck the tyranny of the majority. Man. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> it's democracy, bitch. But fuck democracy. <laughs> Trump or Clinton. I think, I think we wow. need to stop with this everybody gets a vote shit and just elect a DP representative that gets to make the call. I'm All right. Well, let me guess ring. who you want that to be. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, shit. Paul, uh, have you seen the video that Brett Keen posted that he immediate, almost immediately deleted? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was funny how it kind of unfolded because I watched that video. Somebody sent me a link and they were like, oh, Brett Keen pwned your ass. And then I watched it and then I immediately like jumped over to watching a Pimp Monk hangout and Pimp Monk lost his shit because Brett Keen like said some pretty nasty things about his mother for no reason. <gasps> what did he um, say? That's horrible. Uh, I mean, just... I, well, we're about I to see. Exactly. Yeah, I guess so. Let's take a look. Okay, we're doing Brett Keen. Yep. All right, I'm ready. Get drunk, Scotty. Hey, you gotta drive back. Don't get drunk. Undertaker. It's yes. too dark to see it, you fucking moron. Turn a light <laughs> on. <laughs> I think I think the 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 father that punched Brett Keen's teeth out was a Slurpee, or or, or <laughs> more more accurately, multiple Slurpees, like thousands over his lifetime. I think is the reason why he has no teeth. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that out there. Oh yeah. So Jacqueline, since you're uninitiated, Scotty and Paul offered Brett Keen a thousand dollars to show his teeth because they both believed he had no teeth, and I said, "Fuck that." Even if there is no teeth, I just want to see inside his mouth. And okay. he, f he, d he did it. There was some contention at some point, but ultimately he did it, and I paid him the $1,000. I mean, I, I, it's, in, um, it's on his Patreon. It's going to hit him in, like, I don't know, a couple you weeks. You know, the biggest complaint he has about that is that it, he's not going to get the full $1,000. Yeah, well, he offered Patreon <laughs> as a payment method before that, so he Poor goes Brett. suck a dick. Oh, but my God, really? Anyway, That's a lot of money just to open your mouth. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
And uh, so someone offered me three hundred dollars to give them my sweaty, like my nasty socks that I've worn, cause like some Ugh. fetish shit. Uh. I'm like, I'm like, fuck yeah! Like, why would I turn that down? Three hundred dollars to give you some fucking shitty socks? I'll do it. Uh, anyway, I'm, if any other of you people have that fetish, $300 for my old socks, I guess. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that happened, and now Brett, Brett got fucking pissed, and he's, all, he's on the warpath, and this is what's going on. Okay. Ready. Pimp Monk X. You came into my room earlier today. I was having a great discussion with people. You and Tommy from the Bronx, you stopped by. Tommy was telling me about some torn videos that he plans on doing. I guess he wants to come over and have that steak after all. Yeah. But you, Pimp Monk X, you kind of cracked me up a little bit. Because you made a video stating that the thing that really pissed you off about my video was the fact that I invited your mother out to watch you get slapped around. Now, I will admit, some of that Royal Rumble challenge, it was a lot of publicity... <laughs> But there was some All right, so the Royal Rumble uh -huh. challenge he's talking about is Brett Keane said that he will fight 30 atheists one after the other. With 10 minutes in between each round. Yeah, and every one that he beats, he gets $1,000. But if he loses one, then they get to pour a bucket of uh, chicken, chicken shit and, and chicken, chicken grease, grease. Yeah. over his head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, how so it's, come up with this? I don't know. He has a lot of free time. He has, think, he think, has think, infinite think, free time. Yeah. His I life is free time. I think we came up with the idea of the fighting thing, like, or at least the chicken shit thing was us. <sighs> the chicken okay. grease was us. The chicken grease was us. He added just shit, so apparently he wants oh, chicken shit. shit in the mix. Yeah, whatever. And also, earlier he was, t he, he was saying that he was allergic to chicken grease and he, we, we would kill him. Awesome. How does, he now, know, how does he know? Well, you know what? Know. He's, he's well, then bad. how would he even survive bad. the first fight that he lost? Eh. I mean... Which would be the first fight of the night, most likely. Pit Monk, I'm gonna <laughs> slap you around, dude. You're never gonna reach Pit Monk. There's no fucking way. What was Pit Monk like? Seventh in the list or something? If, if people were gonna fight him, I don't remember. Certain people, I could see myself mopping the fucking floor with and stomping a mud Who? hole in their ass and walking them dry. To be honest with you. Who was that? And besides, one of my favorite movies is Fight Club. And you know how people get. You watch Van what? Damme. You watch Chuck Norris. And you. Yeah. He's Chuck Norris and Van Damme, the hey, stars hey, of Fight Club. Yeah. Like, I've seen Predator, so I'm pretty sure I could fight a fucking alien in the jungle. I've seen it. I'm, I think that's good logic. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Start thinking you can take on the world. I was having one of those Mortal Kombat moments. Take <coughs> on the world. I'm honest about it. He said he was having um, one of those Mortal Kombat what, moments. What is that? What is a Mortal Kombat moment? I Brad? guess that's when you... You fun, so fucking suddenly and for no reason think you're a badass. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, I've done yeah. no physical conditioning. I'm a lazy, fat slob who's sat here in front of this fucking webcam for the past ten who's, years. No, who has said publicly he's bedridden. Yeah, but I'm probably a fucking super badass if you scratch just a little <laughs> below the surface. Take on 30 people like it's nothing. As, as long as they come into his bedroom, he'll fight them. Uh, a lot of religious right. people always have this, like, super confident attitude. Like, I had somebody tweet me the other day, and he was like, I bet that I could demolish you in five minutes. An atheist, a stupid a atheist like you wouldn't last five seconds against an intellectual theist like me. And I quoted his tweet and retweeted it. I'm like, do it. You have the internet too. And then he deleted it. Eventually. <laughs> they always do that. I can't, I can't tell you how many times people have fucking thrown down the gauntlet to me on Twitter. And I've been like, okay, here's my little tweet in response to you. And then within two seconds, they're gone. Yep. The original tweet is deleted. Like, oops, sorry. Erasing that from history. Mm -hmm. Why even bother fucking writing to me then? Um, yeah, I don't know. I especially love it when like, Fucking some like 17 year old or something fucking comes and challenges me and I'm like fuck you and they're like I'm only 17 you're picking on a 17 year old it's like you fucking started shit with me I was on the internet when I was your age no one fucking held back for my fucking ass I don't see any reason to hold back you want to fucking engage in the debate I'm gonna fucking debate but that's a little to do with Brett Keen and his hatred of Pimp Monk. So let's listen to him trash Pimp Monk's it's, mom. You know, the, the, the Pimp Monk part is okay. It's when he moves on to Paul. That's when well, he gets Well, Pimp Monk real. was pissed about this. <clears throat> but it's really like uh, the Paul, it's, it's Paul right, got the worst end of it, though. It's right at the end. Uh, he, he, he says something like, oh, you know, I won't have to bring up your stinking ass, nasty ass, fat ass mama or some shit. Like, just out of the blue. Um, and then he moves on to me.
Yeah, yeah. We'll see. But then, Monk, actually, you said to me that it pissed you off that I actually brought your mother up whenever I said to bring her along so she can watch her little foley get smacked down. I actually use that reference from one of my favorite wrestlers of all, Mick Foley. I don't know if you've ever seen his Mankind or Cactus Jack persona, but he says, uh... Uh, Foley's little boy, he's going to go in there and he's going to fight and he's probably going to get tore up. And he goes into this whole fucking deal. That sounded a lot more like Paul Bear. But I found it fascinating. <laughs> no, it didn't sound like anybody ever. No oh, one sounded, sounded like, like that. Team. <clears throat> I've tried repeatedly to be friendly to you. Yeah, I've tried over and over and I know that you have a conflict. No, no he hasn't. Well, Call them catfish face. Well, in all fairness, Pimp Monk does look, is a catfish-looking motherfucker, man. <laughs> well, what can you do? To where you're trying to impress and make the drunken cousins <coughs> happy at the same time, try to be nice to me. And if you think that they're watching, then you'll treat me like shit in order to get some laughs out of everybody else. It's about subscribers, views, and business. I get it. I understand how YouTube works. <clears throat> no, no, you don't. Do you? But the so, like, when when you're banned for life from YouTube, and then you keep coming back, that's not how YouTube's supposed to work. That if, is he, if he knew how to how to function in YouTube as a business, then Brett Keen's decisions have been terrible. I mean, <laughs> abject, objectively terrible. Like, let me lose my accounts, so I lose my revenue streams. It's yeah. brilliant. I love it. The fact that you actually got upset about your mother... When one of the reasons why you and I don't even talk anymore is because you and your buddies couldn't stop talking and dissing on my kids and wife. <coughs> oh, yeah. But Always that old line, that old chestnut. Always gonna stand oh. behind your family, Brett. They attacked my family. No, they didn't. Facetiously. I can't talk about your mother. You hypocritical fucking Mr. Potato Head catfish face looking motherfucker. Hey, I started calling you Mr. Potato Head recently, so you can't <laughs> steal my shit, dude. He's not Mr. Potato Head, TJ. He's the king of the manatee. <laughs> that's how that's how he's known to DP fans the all king over of the, the world. King of the manatee. No. King. It's okay for you to diss from my family, but if I put any oh fucking God. value on my loved ones, that's that doesn't matter, but if right. it's your mommy who you claim that you want to buy a house for, all of a sudden it's a big deal. There was a reason why I even brought your mother up in the first place in the fucking video. What was the point of those glasses coming out? Uh, it makes what did he intellectual when he puts his glasses situation on and then he takes them off? When he takes them off and puts them on again, it makes him look like he's smart in a situation. Okay. To give you a taste of your medicine, but you're so damn dumb and so lacking <coughs> self-awareness, it just doesn't wow. seem to make sense. Wow, I love sense that. For I you. love that so much. It's, I mean, it's the, t it's the stereotypical Brett Keen thing, right? He is the poster boy for lacking self-awareness. He is the least self-aware person that I've ever had any dealings oh, dude, with. Dude, ever look at this. In the history of the fucking internet. Dude, he looks possessed what? here. Dude, the screenshot, dude. Screenshot. Look at this. <laughs> this is fucking great. <laughs> Brett! Oh yeah. yeah. No cheese. Surely no cheese. No fucking cheese. Now that I've dealt with you, uh, Pimp Monk X, and I'm still willing to be nice to you. I'm what? still willing wow. to say... You're such a lovely guy, Brett. Here you say those words. Brett Keen, you're right. I should have never fucking dissed on your family, and no I should have never had that. to worry about you bringing up my no greasy old nasty ass that, mama. You fat sack of shit. And then we that was it right there. Yeah, uh, your greasy old nasty ass mama. There you go, bro. Yep. Yeah, wait. I'm willing to be friend, friendly, friendly with you, and your mom is a greasy, fast, nasty piece <laughs> yeah, of shit. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Been cool. We would shake hands and have a good old fucking time. I uh, go on to Paul, but Brad. you don't. Uh, you don't get that. Things don't register in your head like normal people do. <laughs> What? Then there's Paul. Are you talking ego. about yourself? Oh, here we go. Paul Ziegler right, is not go. capable of making his own fucking content. He was recently <laughs> on an amazing atheist video that a few YouTubers shared with me where he goes into the whole mac and cheese thing. <laughs> and you know what, Paul Ziegler? I, I understand you went, the t shirt now. <laughs> yeah. You, you went into it, Paul. I didn't, I didn't before, but now. <laughs> yeah. You do. See how easy it is to grasp in like a second when you've just been exposed to this for just a little while. You're like, okay, yeah. everything they said about him, I instantly get. Uh, yeah, the mac and cheese thing. Um, 
Yeah, we, uh, in uh, my new video, one of my newer videos, Eggs 2 Bricks 3, there's a scene yep. where, um, well, I don't want to spoil it, because it is kind of for you DP fans, even more than the Amazing Atheist fans, because there's so many DP jokes in it, but... Yeah, there's a mac and cheese related scene that uh, is a, there's a little nod to Brett Keen in it. So um, that's what he's talking about here. Um, but yeah, he's about to criticize Paul's uh, abilities as a uh, performer. Yes. I feel, for you. I feel for you that you do not have the creativity to come up with something new. <laughs> How long have you been dragging out mac and cheese and the manatee fucking shit? This has been going on for literally months. Nothing You're, new out of Paul's ego whatsoever. Paul. If anybody were to walk up to Paul's ego on the fucking street and say, Paul's ego, what kind of jokes do you have today? Manatee situation. Uh, <laughs> Hey, TJ, 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 we have Paul's ego right here. Paul's ego, what new fucking jokes you got for us today? Oh, such a waste on the special Mac and He's got you dead to rights, Paul. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, <laughs> Paul's done. That's Great all you got. Wife. Somehow it's still slaves. You know though. what I find extremely funny? What? Is that I told you about something personal having to do with my teeth and Skype, and then you ran to TJ. Can I no, ask you, you something? Did you ask <laughs> why don't you explain why that's bullshit? That your wife yeah, left? Go ahead and explain. Here's why it's bullshit. Because Brett has released uh, a, a portion of the private Skype conversation that we've had. Interestingly enough, he's never released the portion where he revealed his toothless problem to me. Uh, let me explain to you how I came to know about your teeth, Brett. I watched you. And I noticed that your lips flapped around a lot, and it didn't look like there was much behind them. And I wondered, like, at what point you lost your fucking teeth, because you used to be a toothy motherfucker. And so I brought it up on the show. You didn't share any fucking special thing with me. He you trusted share... you! And, and you betrayed him. I'll be honest with you, Brett. Even if you did, even if you were like, oh, something happened with my teeth, I don't fucking remember it. It was a private conversation that was never fucking supposed to be recorded, was never supposed to see the light of day. And I've thought for a long time that you were a toothless fuck. See, like because I've just you were unemployed, it. didn't want to fucking work, and you're sterile and couldn't fucking breathe? <laughs> Did you tell him that? Because I wouldn't mind hearing yeah, a challenge for that. I actually told everybody that, Brett. The only reason that you know that is because I openly <laughs> shared it about myself. So, That's pretty you, messed you, up. You, he would try it, to, like, cut out it's there. It's it's like, let's say you didn't want everyone to know that. That's really fucked up, but he would... <laughs> right. Well, the, the, the thing is, though, is that if I didn't want everybody to know that, the last person that would know about it is Brett Keaton. Paul, um, you're a donkey. <laughs> you're I, sterile, I never, Paul. I would never share anything personal with Brett Keaton that I didn't want shared with the entire fucking universe, because it's going to be. I, I've, I, I told people months and months and months ago about my infertility. It's not something that bothers me. It's a fact of my life. And Brett Keen just uses it over and over and over again. Later, yeah, later all the video, time. Later in this video, he just makes up a whole... I, I, I recently got a divorce, and he makes up his whole narrative of how that went down. So Let's listen. I, 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 towards that. Did you tell TJ that you're a lazy cunt who cannot... I already knew that. Yeah, we knew that about Paul. It's okay. I'm a yeah. lazy cunt, too. Yep. True. Sit there and get it up. Who cannot sit there and please your wife and can't have any kind of children? Did okay, let's um, say what? That's not the same thing. Let's say all that's true. Let's say all that's true. Okay, yeah, okay, fine. What would it matter? Like if Paul came to like TJ, my dick don't work and I couldn't please my wife's situation and she left me. Would what would I even do with that information? What would I care? It's like okay, well, Use it to I just like you because you're on the show. So who gives a shit? I he genuinely has think. No arguments. I, I genuinely think that Brett Keen doesn't understand the difference between infertility and impotence. He doesn't. Um, I, I, I think he thinks that because I can't make babies, that must mean my dick doesn't get hard. No, the dick still works. The balls, you know, still work. They're not producing viable sperm. Too much but, detail, Paul. No one cares yeah, about oh, your you erect know, penis, God, Paul. God, I've lost my appetite. Oh, shut up, Ben. You know you want it. <laughs> you tell TJ that. Because I'll tell you what, if I had a choice between being less of the man or just a guy that's got no fucking teeth and shit due to whatever problems he's got. Less of a man. Less, you're you're yeah. less of a man now. He'd rather less be... Of, you're not a real man like Brett. He'd where's rather your be a video? toothless fuck. Yeah, Paul, where's the, where's the flexing you? video coming, man?
I know, dude. I need to strip my shirt off right now and flex for Brett Keen. Um, no. I think it's funny to me that Brett Keen thinks that someone's less of a man because they're infertile or something. Yeah, Paul, you're less of a man because you can you can admit things that have happened in your life but, that are serious. But he's more of a man when he has like zero honesty, like zero virtue in any category whatsoever. Zero integrity. So it's it's like okay. Wow. All right, let's hear yep. his theory about Paul's uh, failed marriage. Sure. Yep. I'll tell you what, I'd rather be Brett Keen any day of the fucking week than Paul's ego, this fucking dwarf-like looking... Dwarf? ...fucking primate that's sitting over a fucking <laughs> pan doing mac and cheese after eight months of the same fucking joke. Yeah. How does it make you feel, Paul Zigo, whenever you see my wife's beautiful face at the end of the video, <laughs> knowing that you could not satisfy... <laughs> Okay, you're the only person to ever describe Doran as beautiful. Let's just be oh, clear on that. Scotty, you bastard. How dare you attack his family. Your I've own. attacked Brett's family And that you times. ended up getting stuck with an underage girl that looks like a fucking malformed cabbage oh, patch kid. come now. <laughs> come now, Brett. Not even true. Uh, first not of all, true. she's not underage. No. Uh, she's, 20, she's 22 years old. Um, uh, you may think she looks like a cabbage patch kid. You know, it's funny. I was I was laying next to Ashley watching this video last night, and her response to hearing that was to laugh her fucking ass off. Because at the huh. end of the day, the person putting it forth is Brett Keen. You see, there's a difference here, Brett, between you and me. You said you would rather be a toothless fuck than impotent, than less of a man. See, I'd rather have non-working sperm than be fucking 38 years old, toothless, graying, and bedridden, laying in my fucking dungeon of a house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, that's... Yeah, I'll, I'll take non-functioning sperm over over never being able to leave my fucking home. That's so one I thing... That's a different opinion. <clears throat> that's one thing Jacqueline probably didn't know about Brett, is that he's 38 years old. <laughs> yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> It's, it's embarrassing. I don't understand why he feels the need to insult so many personal things about you. Like, you, you know that someone has no argument at all for the actual debate that you're supposed to be having when they start insulting things like oh, that. Of course. Especially, Welcome to Brett you know, Keen. I, I mean, I mean especially since he thought, that he, was, he thought that he was exposing some secret, too, which makes it even worse. Like, I mean, you know, great that it wasn't, but that's what he thought he was doing, which is pretty fucked up, I think. Yeah. You know, I actually considered when we were having like that personal conversation, like I well, I, I didn't consider it during, but like when we were Don't having Don't tell anyone. I, I was going to I was going to be like um you know, uh, Brett, uh, and reveal some fucking fake thing about myself. Like, I'm missing fucking three toes on my left foot. <laughs> <laughs> to see how long it takes him to run to the internet. Paul's a fucking stump foot. He's <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you, you, you gotta do that. You still have to do that. <laughs> you, even saying it on this show with him watching, he'll still <laughs> he fall for do. some shit. Dude, Paul, you have to do that. I guarantee you'll fall for it. I guarantee yeah. it. <laughs> he, he probably would. But yeah, Brett, you don't... Um, uh, coming out of somebody else insulting my girlfriend and insulting my ex-wife and stuff, it might be something that gets me all hopped up and angry and shit. But it's you, Brett. It's Brett Keen. It's the bottom of the fucking barrel. Um, I could give a shit less what you think about my personal life. Um, More like the termites living under the barrel, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, whatever. Do you call your favorite chocolate? Just curious. You see, I can be quite gruesome and cruel as well. I prefer to be loving and kind and gentle with people. But if you're going to really? continue to be a Paul Bunyan looking motherfucker, <laughs> that your only ambition and dream in life is to give up your college and schooling so you can sit on a fucking show for three hours, get drunk, do drugs to your vapor fucking pipe, and that's it. <laughs> do drugs to your you. vapor you're pipe. Do drugs do to some your drugs, vapor pipe, Paul. Do some I, drugs. I, did he say do I, drugs to your vapor <laughs> pipe? Is that yeah. what he said? That's I, a weird I, I way to phrase that. Some, I wish I had some drugs for my vapor pipe, yo. Like, right now, that'd be nice. Drugs for my vapor Let's pipe. And I still believe that the Amazing Atheist is the only one out of that entire group that's got any fucking talent. He's the only reason why that hey, train you know, even... When he's right, he's right. When he's yeah. right, he's right, guys. Come on. Unfortunately, this position has changed like three times in as it many has. weeks. It's gone from TJ carries the whole show to all the rest of the drunken peasants should dump this dead weight TJ and go out on their own. And now we're back to TJ runs the whole show. Like, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, if, if we're talking about who runs the show, it's definitely Ben. 
<laughs> if we're talking about who makes the show good, me. Yep. Yeah. Me. <laughs> Paul, you can't even hear because he's all staticky half the time, you know. Yeah. And when he's actually here, he steals the show from me, but thankfully he's not here. He's got to deal yeah. with his shitty Skype. That's like his handicap, man. <laughs> Thank God for that, because otherwise it would be the Paul show. I don't think it would be. He dominates. But now he outranks he you. He outranks right? you now. Yeah, yeah see? In the it's first all part place. of his Machiavellian scheme, dude. The rest of you are bullshit. You're weak. You're yeah. as fake as Rey Mysterio's mask. Bullshit, weak Peace Rey Mysterio out. mask. Yeah, How's that for some fucking mac and cheese cunts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brett. That was his nice version. Work, that Brett. was like his version of like uh, how you like them apples, I guess. I just mic dropped you like on your TJ. Mac how you like that mac and so, cheese? So Jacqueline, you're not a, a Brett Keen aficionado like us. What did you make of that uh, whole spectacle? I, I mean, it's amazing to me how many times he flip-flops between saying how nice of a person he is <laughs> and then saying something horrible and flicking off the camera. Somebody should edit him together saying, I'm a really nice guy, you know, flicking the camera off. I think it's wrong to insult family insults family. Oh, it's, like, it's, been, it's been done. Amazing. It's been you don't done. Even, oh, yeah. oh, really? You almost don't it's even so need to edit it because he, he, he does yeah, it on yeah, himself. It's, it's like it's just back he, and forth, back and forth. He quits YouTube like once every two to three months and then comes back within 24 hours Paul, every how many, time. Paul, how many times has Brett quit YouTube, you think? Oh, my God. Even Paul doesn't know I that. Mean, at uh, yeah, I, I don't have an exact count, but it's at least 20 at this point. Like at least <laughs> 20. And by the way, Jacqueline, uh, you owe Brett a bunch of gratitude because he created YouTube atheism, according oh, to him. Oh, he did. Yes. Well, thank you, Brett Keen. <laughs> I really appreciate it. What great, would I do the, without you? The great thing about listening to Brett Keen uh, give a screed about your family and your personal business is this. Like, even if all of that was true, even if my, my wife left me uh, because I couldn't get it up and I couldn't <laughs> please her. And I'm less of a man, and I'm dating a cabbage patch kid. All of that was true. <laughs> I'm still not Red Team. So I still have a leg up. I can still go to YouTube and go, Welp, I'm not at the absolute bottom. There's Brett. And that's true for pretty much anybody on the fucking planet, too. Like, the worst person in the world. TJ and I were talking about this one day uh, while I was down in Columbus. Like, a fucking convicted multiple child rapist could be in prison and be like, man, I've really let my life go astray, but at least I ain't bred. Whoa. You know what I mean? Like, he is, he is the bottom of the fucking scum pond. Uh, nothing that he says could... And that's why, you know, I kind of... I, I talked to Pimp today, because Pimp Monk got really mad about what Brett said about his family. And, and Pimp Monk's... Pimp Monk's not really... You know, he hasn't been exposed to Brett uh, for as long as a lot of us have. And I just told him, I, I said, you know, at least you're not Brett Keen. Um, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, remember, <laughs> yeah. who's, remember who's making the fucking accusations. Remember but who's, maybe that's why who Brett, is. That's the beauty of Brett, though, is that, you know, the entire world can look upon him and be like, well, at least I'm not that. <laughs> Shit. That is All true. Right. Do you want to move on? Yeah. Yes. Please. Okay. All right. I well, it's over, so we have to. Yep. It's over. All right. It's not planned. Oh, shit. There we go. Shit. And we're all shit. lumps of shit. Yeah. We, well, yeah. we really are. We're all shit. Trump blasts pathetic new ad. Cool. If you are in the battleground state like, let's say, Ohio, the general election is on. Do you need proof? Look no further than the big ad buy oh, coming no. out right now from a pro-Clinton, Hillary Clinton super PAC. Take a look at this. You know, you could see there was blood coming out of her eyes, uh, blood coming out of her wherever. Does she have a good body? No. Does she have a fat ass? Absolutely. <laughs> you like girls that are five foot one, they come up to you nowhere. If uh -huh. Ivanka weren't my daughter, perhaps I'd be dating her. I view a person <laughs> that is, yeah, the <laughs> who's flat chested is very hard to be attacked. And you can tell them to go themselves. That last bit, the bleeped out part. What of, was that again? What did she say? I mean, you know, you know, <laughs> she right. said that. Uh, <coughs> he said that, actually. Donald Trump taking you guys on, saying that you took him out of context. He tweeted this very quickly. The path, the pathetic new hit against me misrepresents the final line. You can tell them to go blank themselves was about China, not women. He's right, uh, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> first of all, I think it's pretty hilarious that we released 60 seconds of advertising and he only disputed three <sighs> seconds of it, meaning that he... Yeah, man, he should have debunked the whole thing on that Twitter, man. 
Um, this, this is just standard political advertising. Like, why is this at all surprising? Why is it? Why? Why does this race have to be this dirty this quick? <laughs> I knew it was going to be. I mean, I knew it was going to be too. But like, Jesus, could, could we like no, even, but, but could we why, pretend why does, it's about issues? But why does Hillary get to pat herself on the back for making it a fucking hit piece? It's like, good job, Hillary. Oh, it, it wasn't Hillary, Scotty. It was a super pat. Oh, pat. okay, yeah. She had nothing to do. With yeah, it. I'm, I'm sure. Give me a fucking break. This is directly from Hillary. This is going to be like the most Jerry Springer fucking election cycle ever. If this is how it starts, this is where it starts. Usually at this time, there's like that pretense of like, let's make it about issues so, before they get really are, dirty. We're going to have a fucking paternity test on. thing. Donald Trump, you no. are not the father. Woohoo! So, so, what exactly is your bet? That, that Scotty and I have a $500 bet. Yeah. That if it comes down to Clinton and Trump, which 99.9% .9 chance it will. Yeah. Um, I bet $500 that Trump will beat Hillary. And I bet $500 Hillary will win. Yeah. Wow. That's the bet. That <coughs> is the bet. I, you know what? I'm willing to bet you this, though. Hillary will probably, with her super PACs and everything, will probably spend more than Trump. Oh, yeah, probably. We'll see. She does have more money. I mean, well, Trump claims to have more money, but... Huh. Yeah, She's going to raise more money than Trump. I'm, I'm, I think it's a little dubious. And Trump's not, Trump's not even trying to pay for his general election uh, campaign. He's, he's relying on the GOP to pay for that shit. Of course. I'm still crossing why not? my fingers for Bernie. I don't know. Anybody else hope a little bit? Any hope at all? The only yeah. chance you got, the only chance you have is like Hillary indictment at this point. Yeah, yeah. Or, I mean, it could the, happen, sup right? or the super delegates <laughs> are just like, you know what? Even though... We're totally establishment, and Hillary is basically our master. Let's defy her okay, suddenly for no D clear the DNC, reason. The DNC so clearly wants Hillary to be the fucking nominee, yeah. so... But, but what, if, what if Bernie keeps winning? You know, what if he gets California, and, and then he does really well? Maybe he could make a case about well, the superdelegates? He, he, he can make all the case he wants. The superdelegates ain't going to change sides. Yeah, they're all loyal to the fucking uh, establishment. It's not as if the superdelegates are going to sit there and weigh shit out. Like, they've decided what they're doing. They, they, they decided oh. months ago. Before people even voted, they decided. Yeah, so, uh, well, okay, whatever. Well, and then one more question to that. Who do you think the Bernie supporters are going to go to? Clinton or Trump? Because I've talked to a lot of people, and they're saying that they're they gonna still split. would vote for Trump. They're, they're going to split. They hate the establishment, so they're like, They're going to split. I think, uh, look, uh, all the polls I've seen have said that anywhere from like a third to half of Bernie Sanders supporters are absolutely have ruled out Clinton, and they're still considering well, Trump. I've been on Real Clear Politics, because you've, you've always been like, your little pot shots, like, oh, I saw this poll. Uh, in most polls, Hillary is uh, above Trump by at least two points, some, some as much as 12, and Trump is up in one poll by two points. Right, but I mean, the fact that they're polling that close, I mean, everyone said that, oh, it's going to be, if they nominate Trump, it's not even going to be a contest. It's pretty clear from the early polls that this is a contest. This is anybody's well, race. Well, obviously, there's going to be some people who are going to vote for the R or the D no matter what. They just see R Yes, that's as my vote, or D, that has my vote. Look, I think a lot of the people who are fucking sick of the establishment and view the Demo and like have increasing animosity towards the Democratic Party, who has done several things that are just remarkably corrupt, like the delegates that they w refuse to seat in in um, Nevada. Um, People are going to get sick of this. They're going to say, fuck the Democratic Party. We're not going to just fucking lay down and take this big Hillary dick up our ass. Uh, I wonder if Hillary's like testing for like how she's going to come at Trump uh, in in the debates and in future ads and stuff. Oh, yeah. This seems like a strange ad from Hillary because this stuff has been out there since he announced. You know, this is not new shit. This is like shit that Trump. I mean, they've been you, they've been bringing it up in the debates and stuff now over and over and over again. But Paul, if, if you look how they've been spending money, they haven't really been spending that much against Sanders. They've just been waiting because pretty, you know Hillary pretty much believed from the beginning, and she's been told obviously that she's going to be the nominee. So all the mo all the money is going to start flowing in right about now. Because it's getting really sure. close to the convention, and they're going to start hammering the shit out of Trump. I guarantee you. you're going to see that every on YouTube everywhere you go. It's just, it's just strange. I mean, I guess it's telling about the American political process that it's come down to like, he said something mean once, vote Hillary. You know what I mean? Like no, <laughs> no compare and contrast of their policies. No, like here's uh, his, because he's got plenty of that shit. I mean, we've talked about it a bunch of times here. His, his st constant statements about <clears throat> going after the families of fucking terrorists and shit. Shit. Like that to me is a more meaty substantive thing than like <laughs> Trump said something mean once, you know, like 
why not why not put Trump up against Hillary? Let's see where they differ. Let's see why okay, she's but, the better candidate. Because the reason they're not going to go after Trump on the hawk thing is because Hillary's a fucking hawk. You know, sure. she's she's going to fucking any all he has to do in a debate is be like, "Bitch, quit acting like you're some kind of pacifist." You know, you got a big you you like the big swinging dick of America <laughs> going and smashing other countries oh, she into does. the fucking dirt. She loves it. You know, so you can't act like you're some kind of fucking peaceful person who represents anything other than a continuation of, you know, whatever military industrial complex. She voted for the war in Iraq. Yeah. How could she possibly say, oh, you know, I, I am a pacifist? I mean, I don't think she's never made that. She's claim. not going to say she's a pacifist. Not even Bernie Sanders identifies a pacifist. But, but that's what right. I'm saying. But she's not going to, but she can't claim that she's not a hawk, which she clearly is. Yeah, she loves war. She loves military fucking uh, intervention well, and shit. A lot of kickbacks to her buddies, of course. If anything, well, Trump loves, could make a stronger loves, case for not liking that shit at this it, point. It's even it's even worse with Hillary because she loves war when it's popular to love war, and she hates war when it's popular to hate war. Um, she really has no stand on it. So you can tell that whatever way the wind is blowing in a in a Hillary Clinton presidency, <laughs> that'll be her position. I think we've all That's talked scary. about it. The only thing we we found Hillary to be consistent on is gun control. Even that, this has been a little, but I think that... That's her most consistent issue. I would say it's way more consistent on that than most other issues. Yeah. She does seem pretty strongly gun control, which to me as a liberal, that's one of the things I care about probably the least. Because I think there is like a legitimate libertarian argument to be made there, but... You know, so whatever. But... I mean, I guess that... The thing, I mean, like, the only thing I can think that's good about Hillary is she probably nominate better justices than Trump does, but I think Trump would oppose the TPP, which, to me, is a fucking another piece of shit trade deal. Hey, TJ, Hillary's against that, I, I think. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> She's against that this week. Wait till she gets in office. We have to approve it. Dude, well, she I was mean, she fought for it same. tooth and nail up until it started polling badly, and then all of a sudden she's like, I hate it! Bullshit. I mean, she kinda, loves it. We can kind of pass the same criticism to Trump too. I mean, he he's he's against the TPP now. Uh, when he gets into office, who fucking knows? He's reversed himself several times on big campaign points. At least so, I who, think the tra at least with the trade deal stuff, he's been consistent. He's consistently that's like it seems like a pretty solid bedrock of his campaign now. I mean, he could be totally full of shit, but at least there's not. We don't go into it knowing for sure he's full of shit. I feel like with Hillary and the TPP, you go into it knowing, like, yeah, okay, she says she doesn't want it, but she's one of the people who fought for it, so, you know, and everyone in, involved in the fucking government is saying, don't worry about this anti-TPP shit she's talking, that's just campaign shit, don't worry about that. So it's per we we know Hillary fucking supports the the TPP. We know that you know she's gonna we, she's gonna fucking um, put more jobs overseas. We know that she's gonna fucking you know give oil companies in America a big break to just do whatever the fuck they want. And you, you know even ta in the TPP it says even townships and shit can't stop big companies for drilling for fucking uh, oil and doing these these uh, fracking bullshit. You know. Uh, even though it, it's going to affect the town directly, the town is going to lose the ability to sue under the TPP. Not to mention, mm -hmm. content creators like us are going to find that uh, the TPP has a bunch of fucking provisions that make it even easier for copyright holders to fuck people like us in the ass. Like, oh, you played two seconds of our shit? Well, we, we have the ability to summarily remove that, and uh, you have no ability of countermeasure whatsoever because we've weakened copyright laws to that point. Or we've strengthened copyright laws in our favor to that point um so i mean it's just there's so many bad things about that i mean it's it, we're basically facing down disaster whichever of these candidates gets elected <laughs> i mean it's, it's just like america is just fucked we're just caught between a rock and a hard place like really i've never seen before in my lifetime it's probably not you historic wanna, or anything but do you want to watch the uh let's see this one god is using donald trump sure cool. oh, yeah. why is donald trump Bonus buckets! Uh, having so many votes. Why is there such a warfare in the political arena right now? Mm. And I believe God's <coughs> using Donald Trump, whether you like him or hate him, you know, I believe God is using him to trumpet, okay? The to nature Trump of oh, trumpet! Oh, wow. yeah, I get it. Wow. <laughs> I love now how, he, since he's the nominee, it's like, I'm pretty sure God, you know, Glenn Beck was saying that it was Cruz, so now they're saying it's Trump. You know, God, God sending mixed fucking messages. 
He does. Wait until afterwards to make your predictions. Then they're always accurate. But America believes, and, and in essence, we believe a lie, okay? And, and Rick Trump, Joyner said we it believe might a lot be of lies. Final Trump. Right. Well, and he could, and he could be right there, okay? <laughs> Whatever because that Trump, means. Trump is Morning Star Ministries? Hey, I love is Morning it, Star. <laughs> isn't Morning Star <laughs> Not like, the fake meat. Isn't that like the <laughs> devil? Isn't he supposed to, isn't yeah. the devil supposed to be the Morning Star? That's, what the fuck is going Morning on? Morning Star is also like vegan meat and shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Vegan vegetarian Weird. meat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, two times in the New Testament, okay? And the last <laughs> Trump of God, you know? And the thing that's fascinating to me is, is that uh, he, God has used him as, if you will, a prosecuting attorney to show the political sins of this country. And when you've no, got, no, you know, no. when you've got... What evidence do you have for that? Some fucking Bible passage you didn't even fucking bother to quote is, that's the reason why Donald Trump is being used by God. Trump is the chosen You know, God. God just pulls the strings of Donald Trump. Whatever. C come on. Give me a break. Shill some bonus. So Here's, fucking crap. You know what? Uh, this one should be good because this is Alex Jones. Oh, yes, this is great. And this is, Tranny Michelle Obama killed Joan Rivers to cover up trans <laughs> secret. Sweet. <laughs> this is uh, awesome. Fury. Oh, let's put this on screen, please. It's up on Infowars.com. Fury at racist cartoon comparing Butch and masculine Michelle Obama to pregnant... <coughs> Ready, Melina Trump. Pageant ready, it says. Not pregnant Pageant ready. ready. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's pregnant hey, ready. He corrected himself, yeah. TJ. She's pregnant she's, ready. She's ready to be impregnated at any moment. <sighs> TJ, you have to remember I'm Alex not... Jones is not part of the ruling elite, TJ, so he might not have as, as good of a, a fucking vocabulary as, you know, you, which you're part of the Illuminati for sure. Oh, I thought it was part of the Jesuits. Yeah, same, pregnant. same shit. She's pregnant ready. Nothing Paul's ego can do about that, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you infertile piece of shit. <laughs> I'm having a Freudian slip. Now, 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 let me go ahead Wait. and show you this. What, you you were having a Freudian slip? What? Are, are you saying that you, that you want to impregnate her? He wants to impregnate Tranny Michelle Obama, is what he's saying. No, <laughs> I think he said he wanted to impregnate the other one, whichever. No, we, I think we all know what he really was meant. It Melania or whatever the fuck? Yeah. Okay. Maybe he wants to impregnate them both. I want to make women pregnant. This is the two ladies, and we've had doctors on about this. Her shoulders are too wide. She's on like the 100th percentile of women, okay, with her body type. Her oh arms, gives a everything shit. she always... I don't understand like why I, I've seen so many people hate on Michelle Obama. I think she looks right. She works out. She promotes health and fitness all of the time. Like what? What does it accomplish to bring her down and, and say that she looks uh, like a? She's kid? part of That's the so ruling elite that need, controls this country. What are you talking about? He's just, he's just trying. He's trying to make a case here. It's like a that Michelle Obama case. is not a woman though. She's not a woman. She's not they a have woman. Kids. She has children. They have doctors. They have oh. doctors that have examined this picture and have determined she's no possible way. There's no way that's a woman. There's this pooch. No oh, fucking their way. Their children were grown in a laboratory. Yes. <laughs> Clones like of yeah. Pharaoh yeah. Ramses. This is like a brave new world. Bring either a cod piece or has genitalia. Okay? <laughs> now, a she piece. looks like a man. She's wearing a, a dude cod looks piece. like a Henry lady. Henry VIII. Lady, lady looks like a dude. That, and look this like, is a that picture funny. is ridiculous. That looks so ridiculous. <laughs> That's what she looks look like. like <laughs> Come yeah. on. They're making her look like the She-Hulk or something. Anyone can draw a cartoon. Uh, Michelle Obama is Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> in a dress, apparently. Like <laughs> exactly. Uh, I was going to go with Mr. T, but okay. Cartoonist Ben Garrison, who they're always calling racist and bad. And, I mean, I'm sorry. It's true. It's a giant viral video phenomenon for like eight years that she's a man. All I know is Obama was raised by a tranny in Indonesia. They're into all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Hillary's daughter. What? Obama no, guys. It's a commonly known fact that Obama yeah. was raised by a tranny in Indonesia, dude. <laughs> he was born in Kenya, then he was immediately transported to Indonesia, where a tranny <laughs> raised him up to be a communist infiltrator in the United States. <laughs> It's all, it all makes Honors, sense. Webster Trust Hubble, us. None of the stuff we're told by these people is true. And national media takes it. When I talk about this, and it's like, I'm crazy. Listen, there's hundreds of millions of views on YouTube. There's some videos with like 10 million views apiece. And there's... Yeah, dude. So what does that mean? If there's tons of views on a YouTube video, the contents of that video are automatically true. Yes. Dozens and dozens of them. Probably more than 100 million. I'm just guessing. Okay, it's, that's totally fallacious. Dead reckoning. Where, where mainline liberal sites think she's a man. 
Okay. No. What? It, mainline no. liberal. What mainline liberal yeah, site thinks she's a man? Show us the article yeah. where MSNBC. fucking MSNBC. Yeah, Rachel Maddow front, front, gets on the fucking air and lets us know. Front page of the Huffington Post. Da fuck that tranny, Michelle Obama. Yeah. Michelle Obama, tranny? Question mark exclamation point. Front page Huffington Post. I think I've seen it, dude. Ariana Nobody Huffington sitting down interviews like, look, we got uh, medical experts to study her shoulder width, and we have definitively one. proven. It's not racist to say she looks like a man. And, and let me explain something. Cartoonists oh, famously make fun of everybody. Yeah. No, it's not racist. It's just <laughs> stupid. <laughs> it's just fucking stupid. Hey, he's not racist, though. It's not why he's saying it. <sighs> he looks possessed by the devil. That's just how he always looks, though. You ran for office. You are the co-president that tells kids what lunch to eat around the country. Co-president? Michelle Obama did not run for office. She's the co-president because she <laughs> did some lame-ass nutrition yeah, program. Don't eat pizza. You're taking our rights away. <laughs> All right, co-president. I'll take... Uh, look, you take child nutrition and I'll take everything else. All right, break. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> oh, I love it. Because you're God. You're God. Obama is obsessing, saying he'll sue Texas, sue North Carolina if we don't teach five year olds how to be trannies. Trying to sexually <laughs> confuse kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've, I've actually, I'm in Texas and I've heard about this initiative uh, teach, teach five year olds how to be trannies. Uh, it's a new health class. Um, yeah, no. All right, no. little Billy. Here's uh, today's lesson. Your penis is evil and should be removed. <laughs> <laughs> really? Whoa. And you're fair game. And, and don't forget, don't forget, the famous comedian, Joan Rivers, said, of course everyone knows she's a tranny. She's dead serious. Yeah, she's a man. Deader than a doornail <laughs> in a routine operation where basically she had fire poured down her throat, was a fire-breathing goblin. Dead on in a comedy routine, she did this? Yeah, in a comedy routine, but it wasn't a joke, is the thing. It oh, wasn't it a joke. Comedy. Dude, here's and the smoking, then, but, fucking smoking gun. Look right here, TJ. Yep. Joan Rivers dead two months. Two months after, after calling, calling Obama gay Michelle a tranny. Wow. <sighs> they fucking killed him. Or killed her. Case rather. closed. Yeah, they killed Case her. Case fucking closed, guys. Obama and Michelle were sitting there at home. They were taking in a Joan Rivers comedy routine. All of a sudden, Obama's a faggot and Michelle's a tranny. Hey, TJ, though, how long is it going to be till Alex Jones is dead? He and Obama's like, kill that bitch. Yeah, you know, it's kill funny, that bitch now. It's funny that you know Joan Rivers gets murdered. All these people get murdered by the Illuminati, but you know Alex Jones somehow manages yeah. to stay alive. Yeah, I mean, she says it in a comedy routine, and she's murdered instantly. He says it totally seriously to an audience of millions of people who actually take his dumb ass seriously. And Obama's just like, yeah, let him go. <laughs> Don't worry about him. No. Joan R we got Joan Rivers. That was the real threat. Uh, whatever, Alex. You're insane. I mean, it's... Why do I even need... I don't even need to say that. I don't even need to say that. Your mouth off, honey. You will die. <laughs> why aren't you dead then? <laughs> like Bono, that's billions and huge concert <laughs> deals. Says it's all going to charity to AIDS Africa and keeps 99% greediness. And George Clooney opened the borders up. He has $100 million chateaus. Doesn't bring in one. Okay, so he, now he's talking about Bono and George Clooney? They're the real problem. They're rich. Okay. An immigrant or whatever and says Trump wants to hurt women because he says radical Muslims are a danger when it's the radical Muslims totally enslaving over 500 million women. George Clooney, you maggot. You know there's all those... Take that, uh, Clooney. How you were related to everything that came before, I don't know, but fuck you. Yeah. The videos where Obama keeps calling... Well, Michael here, I mean Michelle. Hey, uh, Michael, I mean Mich M uh, Michelle, come uh, on over here. Oh, Michelle's real name is Michael, and Obama just can't keep uh, it straight. Can't keep it, can't keep it straight. Even after all these years, can't keep it straight. Yeah, a fucking seasoned politician just always slipping up. Yeah. Mike, I mean, uh, Michelle, come here. You don't see Obama slip up too often. Um... Michael, my tranny, I mean, uh, Michelle, my wife, you know, come Why don't we show this clip of, of Obama like, Michael, oh shit, oops. Like if it exists, yeah, roll the show, clip. Roll the yeah, roll the clip. Most of all, there we go. Admiral Mullen, Deborah, Michael, and I also want to 
acknowledge uh, your son Jack, who's deployed today. I really oh, think, shit. How do you know? Hold how, on. Wait, how do we know he was referring to Michelle? Because there was right. no correction there. How do we know he wasn't talking about someone named Michael? We don't. Okay, whatever. I mean, um, I guess that maybe Michelle Obama is a tranny, dude. Because, I mean, Michael. he clearly said he's clearly, yeah, Michael. Let's see fucking Michelle Obama's long form birth certificate to prove she's a woman. She's not. Let me see her vagina. Let me inspect her cervix. <laughs> Let me make sure everything's wow. in order. Amer the American people deserve to know if their first lady is just some fucking tranny. <laughs> Trying to make yep. our kids not eat fucking pizza every day. Fuck you, bitch. Fascism comes to America wrapped in a fake vagina. <laughs> All right. Uh, here's Glenn Beck. We are the new pilgrims. <laughs> Okay. And I'm, I'm well, you know, the, the idea that we just need somebody to run it like a business is um, from right from Woodrow Wilson. Right from Woodrow Wilson. If anybody read that Woodrow book Wilson. that I talked about a long time ago, I don't even remember. Right from Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. 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 over that one. Woodrow Wilson. Glenn Beck's got a fuck. Ever since uh, Cruz lost, Glenn Beck's been uh, taking nips from a fucking um, flask in his jacket yeah. and shit. Like, <laughs> Back on the sauce. Woodrow Wilma, Wilma Wilder. It was, uh, yeah, Philip Drew, administrator. And that's all it was. We don't need a president. We don't need a constitution. We need an administrator. No. And that's really where we, we are. And that's why I've said um, last week that I think uh, freaked a lot of people out that the America that we know is now officially over. The so you you supported that structure when the guy you wanted to win was in the race, and now that he's gone, it's like we really don't need any of that shit. Now we just go well, bye bye. <coughs> America is officially over every election cycle. Every election cycle, this is it, man. Obama's <coughs> taking it. This is it. One more Obama. We can't survive another Obama presidency. It's the same fucking narrative over and over and over again. Yeah, I mean, like, this is the same guy, like, Obama's fucking FEMA camp death camp squads coming to round us up, and, you know, it hasn't happened. He's waiting till December. Yeah, he's waiting till, like, his final month in office yeah. before he reveals, thought you were getting rid of me? Bullshit. Four more years of Obama. In fact, a lifetime of Obama. Martial law, faggots. Emperor, I'm president forever. E Emperor Obama. Do your Obama voice. Uh, I'm, uh, emperor now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Fundamental transformation uh, has happened. <laughs> and the America that was the constitutional founding father's America. God. He just has the face of, like, a 1930s hobo. Huh. To me, like, his I chin always, grew. His chin grew. I always even just more. see him in like a movie as like the drunk on the sidewalk, <laughs> you know, with a knapsack on a stick that fucking just you know rides the rails from town <laughs> to town, just looking for a place. It would to be call a lot better own. if that was Glenn Beck's profession in life. But instead, he's, you know, whatever. I don't even know what he is. Doesn't exist anymore. A huckster. Now, that doesn't mean America's not going to go on. It just doesn't exist. Our new founders are. Uh, Theodore uh, Roosevelt, Woodrow Wilson, uh, Eugene Debs, all the, Margaret Sanger. It is the progressives that have founded, and it's taken them a hundred years to get it to happen, but they have slowly done it. Um, uh, and, and, and we're here now. So now the question is, where do we go from here? And as I, I asked the guys on the radio show, and I'd like to ask you guys this. Why is, why is his hair yellow in, like, just... One part? I don't know. Um, maybe it's just like the last vestiges of his blondness. Okay. okay. If there was a place, and I said to you, there is this Or maybe new it's land. jaundice. It's untouched. <laughs> Nobody's going to bother you. You can practice your religion and live your constitution in peace. Now, it's a little wildernessy. I mean, you're going to have to build it up yourself. And we're, but we're going to go, and like-minded people are going to go and be there. Is he proposing? But you'll be able to do. Is he proposing that they like just go and like live in some random place? <laughs> I'm down with it. Yeah, the well, things that you want to do and pursue your happiness in peace. How many people? 
I heard Texas is talking about seceding, so maybe they can go there. They're always talking about that. Yeah, they're going to vote this time, I think. Dude, I think it just like needs to happen. Kind of vote. There's no way it's going to happen. I think it, it should, should, man. It should, it should I support happen. the secession of Texas, now that I really think about it. Fuck Texas. Well, they're just dragging us down. Paul, uh, just, you give know. Me a, just give me a fucking heads up bef so I can get the fuck out of Dodge before <laughs> it happens. That's all I ask. Nah, you gotta stay, Paul. No. Yeah, you gotta be our Texas correspondent. Report what's happening no. in Texas to us. The, if Texas decides to become its own country, you're out. Uh, you're like, nope. Yeah, yeah, I'm gone. I don't want to be a te I, I, I'm, I'm okay with living in Texas as part of the United States, but I don't want to be a part of the People's Republic of Texas. Yeah, when uh, you know, when the, when uh, when Mexico comes to take Texas back, we'll just be like, you guys got it. Fuck Mexico. You really think that the United States would allow Texas to fucking secede? How yeah, many, how many, that's how exactly many, what's going to happen. How many federal fucking military bases are there here in Texas? <laughs> of Texas course. Is fucked. I say, well, let dude, them, I say just let them do it, They depend on man. federal money. There's no way that I want, they really want it to happen. It's just some fucking saber-rattling bullshit. Here, they fucking roll out of I say leaders. just let them do it because they'll be back. It's like the, it's like when you're like a little kid and you're like, I'm running away from home. And then you fucking walk down the street and you're like, I don't want to do, do they, this. Do they want to be like Puerto Rico or something? Or do they want to like completely sever all ties with the, wanna... with the union? <laughs> I think they want to sever all ties. And it's funny because, you know, just oh recently God. here in Texas, there have been huge thunderstorms, hailstorms, giant flooding in Houston. And Texas immediately <laughs> turns to the federal government going, man, we need some of that government fucking disaster money. Like, how is this state ever going to fucking support itself when it can't handle a fucking it flood? Oh, Paul, you can go look at it. Most blue states actually fucking, like, like if you look at it, like, per capita, they pay, they pay in uh, more than they get out. Texas is not a state. They fucking, I think they get, it's like, for every dollar they pay to the federal government, they get, like, $2 or $3 back or something. Yeah, why are we propping up Texas? Hey, Texas is a burden on us. You it know? Is. I say, let them have it. You know, it's got to be, like, over a fucking five or ten year period so people can get the fuck out if they don't want to be part of the republic. But, you know, then they can have their little conservative utopia of Texas. Jacqueline, your thoughts on Texas? <laughs> I've always said to let them secede, but like you said, there are a lot of places there that are federally funded, so it's not going to happen. I think it's a ridiculous argument. It kind of reminds me of, of people whenever they get pissed off the election, they're like, I'm going to move to Canada or I'm leaving the United States. It's just a thing that people always say, and then they forget about it and get used to it again. Because no matter who gets elected, the same shit's probably going to happen well, to a large degree anyway, so... The funniest shit ever was when conservatives were mad about Obamacare and they said they were moving to Canada, where their <laughs> health care is even... Healthcare. Yeah. So yeah. Funny. I don't know. I, I have a lot of people that I, I collab with and stuff that live in Canada, and they love their health care system. I'm kind of for it. No, they don't. They hate it. Okay. Hate it. I would say that's true for most people I've known from Canada. Well, they have like a, they have like a provincial healthcare system, basically. Yeah. So it depends like what province of Canada you live in. No. Yeah, that's how no, it works. you're wrong. That is how it works. Yeah. Here's how it works in Canada. You just got to go to the witch doctor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got to walk. Th well, that's true. Yeah, you got to walk three or four hours through the woods until you find the shot. Bloodletting. They 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 practice bloodletting. Yeah, they cover you in leeches. <laughs> Hey, yeah. but guys, it is more cost effective. They believe in phrenology, so they try oh, to no. like, you know, <laughs> they try to fucking put holes in your head to fucking let the evil spirits out and shit. It's barbaric there. I've done it. Cool. Like what 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 is uh how how's Texas going to make money? What's Texas big Texas's big export at this point? Tumbleweeds and armadillos? <laughs> like they're uh, going to be the foremost salesmen of armadillo shells <laughs> in the world. Oil and natural gas is like the main oil, industry. Oil probably, yeah. Uh, you know what they're gonna do too is um, they're gonna when they when they get rid of like minimum wage laws and all that shit they'll just uh, they can become a, a like a third world manufacturing base. They'll be like mini China. Yeah, like mini Mexico, really. Oh yeah, true. They'll just well, call the it like country, Mexico White. A lot of people uh, moving here are like, yeah, there's no sales tax, there's no state tax here, man. Yeah, it's good. Well, fucking the rest of America props up Texas's ability to have no state tax. Uh, like Scotty pointed out earlier, for every one dollar they pay the federal government, they get something like three back. So uh, Texas is in no way a self-sustaining nation. I've been here long enough to see that it's fucking falling apart as is. The roads make no fucking sense here. It's flooded constantly. There's 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 no way. There's Anecdotal no way. So just evidence. give me a heads up. Like anecdotal you guys evidence, let me know. Paul. You guys let me. Oh yeah, you're right. It's a big anecdote. You're right. All right. Um, <laughs>
I think it's time to move on. No. Let's please. Well, well this thing here says... Oh, sorry, Scotty. Well, that's fine. I'll say it after you play it. I forgot to play the new one. That sucks. I like the new one. But, yeah. Uh, Whatever, you're over. But, but Paul, uh, Texas basically relies 32% of their budget is federal aid as a percentage of state general revenue. It's 32% in taxes. So more, more than a quarter of it. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, we yep. want to secede. All right. Um, this, That's this like if you can't even pay your like $200 rent on the apartment <clears throat> your parents let. I mean, like on the, the, the room your parents let to you, and you're like, I'm leaving to strike but, it out of my own. Look, there's going to be no more socialism, so the government's going to have a balanced budget. Obviously. Cool. This video is called, I'm not gay, but I really hate women in general. Cool. Okay. I, <laughs> so somebody went on a rant in my inbox on YouTube and was telling me, I should talk about how women have become shallow nowadays and you know as a straight male he emphasized that he was not gay he said could you talk about how women have become very shallow materialistic and this that and the other in the yeah, 21st dude. century we Rock don't on. really have down-to-earth women anymore and it's a change that's going on I just want to say instead of a, you know going on a rant about that uh, I just want to say that I understand that if you're a straight male and you go through a lot of rejection of women throughout your life, you're going to feel a certain feeling that, you know, yeah, you're not gay, but at the same yeah, time, you better. don't really like women. Mm. You kind of dislike what they're like. and They're just bitter. You just don't really... Like bitch wouldn't give me no pussy, so I hate that bitch. I don't. I mean, that's pretty clear cut. Like, I can't have this for some reason, so I hate it and it's bad. It's like, I mean, it's kind of obvious. What the fuck's they're... wrong with these women's? It's what, uh, yeah, they're not looking at themselves. They're just saying, I'm perfect. It's all these fucking women nowadays. Even though guys have been saying this shit probably since they've been able to speak. Fucking dykes. You see the connection, so you're confused on what to do. You're like thinking in your mind, should I hire some prostitutes? Yeah, <laughs> probably. Pro yeah, I, I, yeah. That's probably a good idea. Like, if, if, you, if you just go through, like, years and years of constant rejection, maybe it is time to just get some prostitutes. Um, and just have sex and discard them. I don't know what to do. I feel lonely. You don't have to discard them. They'll discard themselves. They just want your money and to leave. Yeah. That's the whole point. <coughs> I can to, like, empathize more confident. I, this is, like, one of my biggest pet peeves whenever guys act like, it's somebody else's fault because they're not successful, like with women. You know, it's it, confidence is one of the most attractive things. Also, intelligence. So if you could just go out and <laughs> be a normal person, I don't just think just be really confident matters. and intelligent, you piece of shit. Then oh, you mean, get like, all the why. pussy you need. He's just ranting on women because he can't have sex with them. That's that's a shallow reason, and he's bitching about women being shallow. Well, you know, if you in all fairness, if you women would have sex with more of these guys, there wouldn't be all these douchebags running around saying this <coughs> shit. So. Right, I think that's the problem. And I mean, how many guys do you hear talking about money and, and like all a lot of the R and B songs and stuff that you hear in hip hop songs is talking about how they love their cars and money, and a lot of like popular vloggers now are popular because they show off the things that they have and the money and the things that they do. Um, so if they attract women that like those things, it's kind of for that reason. Yeah, I, I hate that self-indulgent shit. That's why I don't like it much like it about like hip hop like now, you know, like if I'm listening to something, I'll listen to like some old streets shit because at least that's honest. I'm not really too experienced in that life that they describe, but they're giving me like what I feel like is an honest picture of it. But I don't care about like, man, I got all this shit, got these cars and I got this pool and I got these women and I got this house and I can jet set around the world and I got all this shit. It's like, why do I care? I don't give a fuck what you have, you piece of shit. Yeah, why do I give a fuck? Fuck you. I'm so I'm just supposed to be like living vicariously through you cuz I can't get that shit myself. Fuck that. I'll just be glad for what I got. You ever heard of the Emancipation Proclamation? I, I don't, don't listen, listen to hip hop. hop. Yeah. Damn. Damn. So. That's an old one. <laughs> when it it's comes an old code, but it checks I out. It before, certainly. And I this is coming that, from Scotty. a guy who what? has been soft with his heart throughout his entire life and his penis. And I didn't really understand how women were. At yeah. all. I, I really didn't have how they were figures in my mm. life. So 
what I would do. I can't figure out these women creatures don't I act. I saw a woman friend and everything like that. I used to be so soft that whenever I liked a woman, I would <laughs> write poetry and leave it on her on her desk. Oh my god! Probably <laughs> the reason why you don't. Or have I would do that. <laughs> That's weird. Oh. Um, you, you know, some women might be into getting poetry, but it's not really sure. the first introduction that you want to give a woman. Like, I've never gotten a date by handing a woman a fucking poem. Really yeah, like. yeah. Normally, that's <laughs> something maybe you would do down the road if, you, you know. Yeah, like, you know, when there's like a relationship there already. Yeah. You know, <laughs> every, yeah, every time I've heard of a guy doing this, like the poetry thing with like the confessional letter, dude, it's, it's all, it never I, works out. Dude, I did it when I was, it was like the first time oh, I, you did it. The first time I ever Guys. hit on a girl, it was that. Guys, I, uh, I, 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 have, I have to do something. I have to do something real quick since we've got Jacqueline here. Okay, I'm sorry to make it make it oh, weird. But what? I, I, I wrote a little something. Oh. Okay. okay. Jacqueline, oh my Jacqueline, your radiance speaks volumes about your intelligence and your beauty. You are beautiful both inside and out. Even your intestines, I believe, look like a bundle <laughs> of flowers. <laughs> So, can we go on a date now, Jacqueline? Is that cool? Yes. Yes, we can. Ah! See, wow. It worked. It worked. Oh, it's game. <coughs> Your intestines, intestines look part. like flowers. The intestines, um, yeah. You know, the intestines <laughs> won her over, dude. I, can, I, I can mean, if you're going to write a poem, if you're going to write a poem of that caliber, then yeah, you're going to get the pussy. Yeah, that's but, Shakespearean. You know, that was can, like some other level shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, look, she's in tears. She's moved to tears by my beautiful poetry. <laughs> she uh, loves I can it. empathize with this guy on a certain level, but it's it's like <laughs> softness is not the only thing that women are looking for. I'm a pretty soft guy, literally and figuratively. Um, I'm, I'm pretty soft bodied and I'm pretty soft with people like that I know. Um, but women are not just into a man's softness. Like, there is a kind of uh, chemistry there where women like strength and independence and confidence and stuff. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe flowers and poetry immediately aren't the aren't the way to get the foot in the door there. Maybe you just kind of be yourself, talk to her like she's a person, ask her on a date, go get go get a movie, um, you know, go get Eat some, some sushi. Eat some sushi. Yeah, also, <laughs> it's also not the way to get a girl back. I've had guys, when they're trying to get you to me to be back in a relationship, they'll start doing that. They'll, like, overwhelm me with, like, weird, sappy things, and it's just, it's not, it's kind of cringy. I so. need you like a drug, bitch. Yeah, it's just like. I need you in my veins. You want more than anything for them just to be, like, strong and, like, show you that they have their life back together or that they're, you know, getting the problems solved that they had before. That's what you want to see, not, like, I'm nothing without you. Like, that's not really. Like, <laughs> that's so hot. Like, uh, <laughs> it doesn't work like that. But maybe that's the problem. Something like that. Or if I liked a girl or not even liked like the girl. If I somewhat liked a girl, I would pick out a flower for her, a beautiful yeah, flower, or buy a beautiful, expensive Cringe. flower, and I would just give it to her. No, you didn't. But the main thing I didn't you fucking realize like flowers is boundaries. For a week. boundaries and detachment. Those mm. are two things that you need to yeah, learn. Yeah, you, you don't understand what boundaries are. Yes. Boundaries. Yes. When boundaries. I was doing these things, like when I was getting flowers for girls. Yeah, whatever. So, next. Next. <laughs> Boring. Poor guy. Let's do, uh... This, this video is 15-year-old girl leaves anti-gun politician speechless. Cool. Right, it's the from Maryland the, yeah. Minutemen .org. I've been shooting for almost eight years. I've also been a part of the Maryland Rifle Club and Maryland State Rifle Team since I was 11. We shoot semi-automatic AR-15 <laughs> and um, my personal rifle is a Bushmaster. Cool. Because okay. of this, I have become eligible for various shooting scholarships around the country to a wide array of even the most prestigious colleges that have shooting teams. Achieving yep. stricter gun control laws would obliterate any opportunity I could have had to attend a decent college on a shooting scholarship. Ever since I first learned no. how to shoot, the issue with gun violence around the nation no, became that's not clear. What gun regulation Guns are not means. the problem. Um, no. I mean, like, it depends on the level of gun control. To say that any gun control would have just... You know, take those opportunities, like ripped them out of your hand, and like fuck you, bitch. Very, very few people are going to achieve the level of expertise. Like someone like this girl, she's talking about going to college or even doing the Olympics. They fire twenty, thirty thousand rounds in even a single session. Yeah, well, this is not the average gun user. But I mean, like, still, like 
even if we enact gun control, it's not going to stop fucking people from being sports shooters and shit. No, of course well, not. There, there, I mean, there's no there's no awareness of nuance and anti-gun control people. Um, it's it's like they're trying to ban guns. Um, I don't hear many gun control advocates saying ban all guns, ban everything. Uh, sensible gun control, background checks, um, <laughs> d d confiscation of guns from people that have broken the law, uh, especially broken the law using a firearm, making sure that everybody has to uh, adhere to the same standards of education and gun control. Uh, it, I've always said this. It's, it's strange to me that you have to go through classes and licensing to drive a fucking car, <laughs> but you can walk into a fucking uh, gun show and buy a gun without a background check. It makes no fucking oh, yeah. sense. That that wouldn't stop college shooting teams. As long as you're as long as you're not a multiple gun felon, you'd still be able to get a license to shoot your fucking gun for your college. Yeah. So, already your <coughs> speech that's supposed to render us speechless has huh? failed. We had we had plenty to say about it. Anyway, maybe that's not the speechless portion. Well, people are Purging our society of violence and murder cannot be done through gun control, gun control legislation. By signing this legislation, no, you are not no, signing away gun violence, help. but instead... Yeah, not, only, not only can it not be done that way, I, 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 I struggle to think of a single person who has said that it could be done that way. Yeah. No, not all violence is going to magically end. If, if you ban guns and everyone's like, turn their guns in, and er everyone did it except criminals, there's still going to be violence. We all know that. Yeah, yeah, so this is just a total straw man. As uh, usual. There, are so, there are so many countries that have enacted way more sweeping gun legislation than I put forth just five, five seconds ago. Uh, yeah. Australia, the, the, the British, the UK. you know, it like, and, and it's, and it has helped their gun violence rate. It has done nothing uh, but help the rate of gun violence in those fucking countries. Yes. So that's the idea. We take this fucking problem where we're like 30 times the fucking gun murder rate of any other comparable <laughs> country, and we reduce it a little bit. Maybe bring it in line with the rest of the fucking world. That's the idea. <coughs> Liberating American citizens of our constitutional rights. You are not eliminating guns from society, but eliminating our ability to protect our lives, liberty, and pursuits no, of happiness. No, you're not. You're not taking Chicago, that Illinois has had some of the strictest gun control laws in, in America enacted for the past few years, and it is currently more than twice as likely for you to be killed in Chicago as in the Afghani war. Uh, for the past part of the reason 11 for that, years, once again, is because fucking Chicago is surrounded by little towns and shit where you can go and buy a fucking <coughs> you can straw purchase. Yeah, a there's, gun. there's no federal legislation to stop you from doing that. You can just go and yep. buy your gun in Indiana. Yep. And oh, yep, here's your gun. That's why this like regional <coughs> gun control shit has never worked. A city can ban firearms, okay? That, that doesn't stop guns. This is an open country. You can drive across this country, so people will bring guns, okay? You need, a feder you need some kind of federal standard to back it with. And there yes. isn't one right now. In four months, in the Afghani war, 2,166 people have been killed. Now in only eight years, in Chicago, 4,265 people have been killed, and 3,371 of them were from being shot. Is that really something we want to model our state laws after? That, that happening? Now, even of those 3,371, only 37 were killed with a rifle, which is barely 1%. Okay. 98% okay. were killed with a handgun, so creating, sure. a gun con so creating gun control legislation that targets assault rifles has statistically <laughs> proven to only weed out less than 1% of the problem if you're uh -huh. looking. I agree. I'd I also agree. like to yes, point out that true. none I agree. It's stupid to target <laughs> one fucking gun. I agree. It needs to be a blanket legislation. It needs to be any firearm, handguns included. In fact, because of the statistics that she just gave that I was aware of before especially she gave them. Especially handguns. Especially handguns. Yeah. There you go. The guns used in the Chicago shootings were registered or licensed to the people who use them, thus even further proving that simply restricting guns will not stop criminals from using them. That doesn't, okay. that doesn't prove that. Um, yeah, and also everyone knows that, yeah, gun violence will continue. Okay? No one says, like, we enact this gun control, it's gonna stop. We're just saying, like, maybe it could make a dent. Well, if It you, seems like it's, it's been tried in other places okay, but it's, it has. It's so fallacious. You're not gonna say, well, we outlawed murder and people still get murdered. Might as well not have a law against that. People still get robbed, even though it's illegal to do it. Might as well fucking abolish those laws. No one's making those arguments. When it comes to guns, people do make that argument. Nor will restricting guns stop criminals from harming others in general. On December 14th, the, criminals are not 2012, the same anyways. day as the Sandy Hook shooting in central China, a man stabbed 
22 children and one adult. Yeah. Guns are not needed for yep. mass murder, and robbing American citizens of our rights to own them won't right, solve anything. Yeah, I mean, there are there are mass stabbings. It happens. Well, well, yeah, sh- sh- she's strong on any gun control. She's equating gun control to a gun ban. That's well, all they all, they all do that. Every single one of them does that. Uh, well, well, I guess I can't. I can't say. Day. I can't be as broad as saying every single one. But so many gun, con- so many anti-gun control people argue as if they're arguing against a complete gun ban, and they won't recognize any nuance beyond that. It's yep. like it has to be an on or off proposition for them. There's no middle ground. There's no compromise. It's just anyone who wants any gun control wants to ban you want guns. The, well, you, well, I, know, I know why. They always say, "Well, you want the government to control it, and then they'll just stop us from having guns because they'll make yeah. a bunch of r- rules." No, they won't. The government, uh, the government's uh, not going to outlaw guns. Any more than they're going to ever outlaw say, cigarettes or anything. Let's say you finally snap, TJ, and you're going to go kill a kindergarten class. Yeah. And there's uh, on the table in front of you is a is a gun and a knife. Which one are you going to pick up? Uh, the gun. Also, Why? if you're, because it's it's easier. I don't have to be right next to someone to kill them with a gun. But the other thing is like. Um, yeah, I mean, sure, there was some mass stabbing in China, but, like, let's be honest here. If you're in a big crowd of people, and there's a murderer on the loose that's just killing people wantonly, what are you going to want them to have? A gun or a knife? I think I'd rather they have a fucking knife. Yeah, I'll take my chances <coughs> against the knife. Thank you. Because with or a the gun, there's no... St- there's, I, I gotta get a lot further away yeah. to be safe. Okay, look, look what happened in Paris with the terrorist attack. I mean, they had, they had AK-47s, and they just went into a crowded theater. How many people were killed? Just, just, by, just by gunfire. I think like 100. You know, I, I found out that that band that was playing at, at the Paris attack is playing uh, here. <laughs> uh, Isn't it the Eagles and, of Death Metal? Yeah, yeah, the Eagles of Death Metal. They're playing here, like, later this month. Yeah. It's interesting. Pretty crazy. Yeah. They, they've seen some shit. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking crazy. All right, let's see. I want to see we the must speechless also consider people. consider the fact that the majority of gun violence occurs in low-income neighborhoods. Huh. Raising the overall cost of owning a gun through higher licensing and registration fees denies the ability of low-income <coughs> individuals to protect themselves against the crime focused in the areas they live in. Passing this legislation well, they've, would they've be the discriminating right against these lower-income individuals who are actually at a higher risk of being victimized in crimes. Yep. To abolish or severely limit the right of the Maryland residents as a whole to bear arms, which is the intent of the proposed legislation, is to essentially oh. defeat the purpose of our own U.S. Constitution. The entire foundation of the United States was formed on the principle that the government, our government, is a government of the people, for the people, by the people, and taking away the people's right to bear arms is taking away the people's power in the government. The Second Amendment, which away. grants the citizens the right to secure... Yeah, I mean... Uh, it's so <coughs> frustrating to hear her say that over and over again. Maryland cannot... Yeah, Maryland can't enact, like, all guns are banned in Maryland. Like, that's not even constitutionally possible for them to do. No. So, what are, you, what are you talking about? Secure their natural rights is a backbone of our democratic society. I hope you all consider these points as you go to vote on this or any other gun control bills. Yeah, any gun Wait. control. Gun Wait. control is such a bad thing. We don't get to see their stunned silence. <laughs> because they weren't. We don't get to see them sitting there like, Oh shit, we are defeated, oh! Yeah, the gun control people have never heard any of these arguments like, Oh shit, we're defeated. You got, got us. Got we're done. Us now. This video should have been titled, Young uh, College Girl Makes Standard Anti-Gun Legislation Argument. Because <laughs> I didn't hear anything that I don't hear a million fucking times. She even did the old Chicago staple. Yeah. You know, look at it. Chicago. Like that's the thing that comes up over and over. Chicago. Look at Chicago. Or California. You think Chicago is like troughed off, like it's got a big wall around it, and they've got like metal <laughs> detectors. You've got to get in. No, it's a fucking American city in the middle of a fucking state where you can easily buy a gun. Of course, banning guns in the fucking city isn't going to stop gun violence. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's the plenty. Of- why this video. The only reason why this video did well is because it's a girl and she's young. Honestly, Probably. I really think because Probably. it's not it's not the person that you would expect oh, to be defending the people, the radical people who want no gun control at all. Like you would expect it to be like a guy talking like this, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> but you wouldn't expect it to be her. And I guess all the people who want to push Look that at you agenda, stereotyping like, like, women. I'm not, she's a, like she's a girl on YouTube and you just judge her. Just What's saying, wrong with you, Jacqueline? You're a monster. You're using her to reach people that 
you wouldn't normally get to agree oh, with. Oh, so now they're thing. using her because she's not smart enough to have her own opinion, huh? Oh, it's opinion, but the reason why the video is doing well with mediocre arguments is because it's a demographic that not many people would use. And that's yeah, she's fine. A, but like, she's a pretty little, little girl with the cross on her fucking neck, and oh, and she she's so this. pure and she's so innocent. Yeah, whatever. So, uh, what's next, Ben? Let's do... <laughs> um, ridiculously ungrateful youth wants socialism. Neat. Uh, yeah, I'm Hunter quiet. Avalone, and welcome to Get Wrecked. Hi, Hunter. Get uh, wrecked? Okay, hold on. My, are my ears getting I, wrecked? I already, yeah. have a, I already have a criticism. Yeah, besides the fucking jarring-ass noise. I already have a criticism of this. It's called Ridiculously Ungrateful Youth Wants Socialism. I, when I hear that title, I expect to see an old man appear on the fucking screen, man. <laughs> yeah, this was like a Prager video or something. Well, yeah, right? I mean, like, when suddenly some 12-year-old is going to lecture me, I'm like, huh? the youth of today just don't know what's what. Hey, I mean, guys, like, I hate socialism. I wouldn't say he's 12. I'd say he's, like, 17 Yeah, or whatever. Something. He's 12. He's 12. Who knows, though? He could be, like, 25 or something. Who cares? It's another Repsion afterbirth. <laughs> 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 Today we're going to be taking a look at this, why I'm voting for Bernie Sanders. And believe me, this little liberal gets so angry at the rich people, this little apparently liberal. it's their fault so that he has any problems in his life whatsoever. You're going to take on a video that has 219 views? <laughs> Dude, he goes for the fucking creme de la creme. He goes for the top. <laughs> I, mean, I guess I've done that before, but I mean, like, it has I to be pretty remarkably bad. I, I, like, I guess our, our show is largely predicated on, on that, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> take, taking weird low-view videos and making fun of them. Yeah. So. Well, for, the, for some of it. I mean, we, we attack like Alex okay, but there's a, gets massive. There's videos. a difference between a show with a format like ours and just sitting down to make a fucking legit video about some shit that only has 219 views. Like, you see the difference between, like, doing this and then sitting down and doing, like, a proper video like from what you experienced oh, yeah, oh, over yeah. here and shit. So I mean like, you know, this represents a lot more effort. So like this Bernie Sanders supporter better be like super cringy and unwatchable. Like this better be terrible. So let's dive in to why I'm voting for Bernie Sanders. So I'm voting for Bernie Sanders. Okay. I'll tell you why. All Wait right. a minute. Are you a millennial? Yes, I'm a millennial. Are you 24 years old? Yes, I'm 24 years old. Yes, I regularly hear that I'm entitled and lazy and... Just a thought, but you might hear that you're entitled and lazy because you're literally voting for the guy who promises you free handouts. It's right here on Bernie <laughs> Sanders' official website that he wants to give free college. But that's not the Monster. case. Monster! Monster! Yeah. It's better that people go massively in debt! Yeah, dude, crushing debt to get a fucking education where you're not even guaranteed a job afterwards sounds like a much better idea than the ability to just go to school. Free market, Paul. Free market. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Gotta keep the market free for Americans like me. For me, and it's not the case for most of the supporters of this movement. Really? Well, that just contradicts Bernie's entire campaign then. That's like me saying I support Hillary Clinton but don't support abortion, despite the fact that's a massive <laughs> issue she stands for. Hillary Clinton supports abortion. She's, he just said that's the massive issue she stands for. Like She, she supports it. Like, you know, yes. you hear Hillary Clinton all the time, you know, being abortion. like, yeah, get, get pregnant and then just have an abortion. Abortion is cool. Abort that fucking fetus now! <laughs> Hillary 2016. <laughs> Hillary is no not abortion lover. That Hillary 2016. Crazy. They love it. Kill them babies. Abortionists love it. Kill them babies. If you're voting for Bernie Sanders, odds are you want the benefits. Yeah. Many of us, most of us, myself included, yeah. are the furthest thing from lazy or entitled. Mm. <laughs> okay, buddy. <laughs> okay, buddy, I know nothing about okay, besides buddy. watching this video. <laughs> we believe you. You see, our parents grew up in a generation in this country where the American dream was a real thing. You know, if you worked really damn hard and followed your dreams, hard. there was a really damn decent chance that you were going to make something hard. out of yourself. Yeah. And a lot of them did. Hard. The problem is that once they made something out of themselves, they started hoarding all that success, all that money, pulling it into their little boxes and locking it up. What the heck are you talking about? They didn't hoard all that money. A lot of them went out and created businesses that you can now go get a job at. And uh, Jeepers, what the heck are you talking about, creators. mister? Oh my god. 
Where's the fucking hook when you need it? Okay, and these previous generations <laughs> didn't go massively into debt to get their education. There was a lot more government state funding for college then, which they, now that they're in power and control, have cut. So yeah, it is a valid argument. Think about it. Even if the rich are spending money on luxurious things just for themselves, that's and money going taxes. back to the economy. If the rich <laughs> get in No, 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 it doesn't yeah. for the most part because they don't. Uh, the super elite rich jet set. They have no one place they can live. They can live anywhere they want. They avoid paying taxes. The Panama Papers revealed that. But we all knew about offshore like Swiss bank accounts, Panamanian accounts, Seychellian accounts, Marshall Islands. The list goes on and on. Monaco. These people. Yeah, these people do not pay. Fucking their fair share of taxes. They because they have teams of lawyers and they have teams of accountants to make sure they pay as little as possible. But they create businesses. The, they create businesses which and most of those businesses do they pay any taxes? Businesses huge... like Walmart where you could get a job. Yeah. At. <laughs> yeah. Great <laughs> job. Businesses like McDonald's where you can get a job at. Until yeah. they're all replaced by They're machines. fucking tax leeches if you really look at them. New house built, builders are going to be needed. That's jobs being provided. Be careful when you call the rich greedy. They do a they lot of people like Be careful, me. how dare you They're criticize. rich, of course they're fucking greedy. What do you mean? Why now if you're... Obviously rich people are greedy. You don't have a lot of fucking money if you're not greedy because you just give it away or you don't give a shit about it. Obviously they like being rich. Uh, this whole idea that the rich create fucking this shit, you, you know, they, they create it because there's demand for it. Yeah. They want to sell can get it. richer off of it. Right. So it's not like they do this out of altruism or something. And the thing is that if you don't have one rich fuck creating it, some other person will fucking create it. There's always going to be, if there's a demand, there's always going to be some fucking market reaction. Like, oh, there's a demand for this, so let's create this. I don't, I don't necessarily disagree. Like, honestly, like, if people want to create a business and shit, I'm fine with that. I just want everybody to pay their fucking fair share. Okay? I pay my fucking taxes. You pay your fucking taxes. Yeah. People all over the fucking economic strata pay their fucking taxes at the exact oh, yeah. rate that they're supposed to unless they're under the taxable limit. I just want rich people to pay their fucking fair share. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to impede their ability to open a new fucking business. <laughs> I just want them to pay into the society that they get rich off of. That's all. That's communism. That's communism, Paul. And it usually goes unnoticed. And then that did a lot of damage to the economy because none of that money is going back in. None of that money is going back in. Wealthy people making $250,000 or more are paying 51.6% in taxes. Of now, income tax. Yeah, $250,000 or more is not even the people we're fucking talking about. No. No. That's not who he's fucking talking about here, all right? We're talking about, like, people who are so rich, like, people who are just, like, so fucking exorbitantly wealthy that most of their money is never going to be spent. It's just going to fucking be accumulated somewhere so they can say, I got $51 billion. Yeah. Dollars. We, we, <laughs> we all know, um, most of the, we know though the Koch brothers sitting there with, like, $60 billion a piece. They're just fucking raring to spend that fucking money. I mean, they spend lavishly, I'm sure, but... They're going to spend maybe, what, 50 to $100 million? You're not going to spend their fucking fortune ever. It's impossible, almost. Say this is evil, this is communism, this is against what America stands for. Well, Bernie is a socialist, and socialism is the beginning of communism, and considering how many people have died under communism... S slippery slope! Yeah, I'd say it's pretty freaking evil. Yep, we're going to be but North America Korea. America stands for, an, you know, it's a nation where everybody is... Man, that slope show is slippery! Oh, of course it is. You start out... You elect a democratic socialist, next thing you know, bread lines and gulags, Yeah, we got man. fucking Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know, man. Right after that. Supposed to have a decent chance to be successful, to be what they want to be. Now, all these people have climbed up this ladder long before our generation. Yeah. yeah. And they're sitting up there on the top rungs, and, and we're trying to climb up the ladder. And they're just kicking us back down. No, they're probably offering you a job and you're running away. They're still... Yeah, uh, here, we're going to help you climb the ladder by giving you a shitty low-wage job in a fucking coal but, mine but you know what they or always, a fucking but you have to know what they fast always say to food that. joint. They always say the same thing to that. Well, that's just an entry-level job, so when you move up... There's no one actually trying to feed their family on yeah, a minimum so here's wage an idea. job, which they are. If only funny. there was some way for these people who get stuck in these minimum wage jobs to get better jobs by, like, I don't know, getting college or something. But they're broke, so how are they going to do that? Oh, wait, I have an idea. Free college for everybody. Problem solved. Fuck no, they you. Need to, they need to pay for it, TJ. They need to pay for it. They can't pay for it. It's too expensive. It's prohibitively expensive. 
you've just well, run into. What I don't understand is like other countries have done this for a long time that are yeah. successful. Like you can, it's like for us, so frustrating for me when it comes to American politics because you can look even with the gun thing, you could look at other countries and see how they've you know put gun control to work and it's more successful than we are here. And then you can look at education and the same thing. A lot of other countries have free education and it's not like people are leeching off the system. No one looks at it like that. It's just like something that obviously you should be giving people because it helps them move up. And people, I have so many friends that are so far in debt from their college education and they can't even get the job that they went to school for because there's not enough of them anymore. And they're working at Applebee's or something as a waitress because <laughs> their college education means nothing and they're in debt like crazy. So you I know, don't it's like. What, it's like this fucking it's wacky just, idea, dude. This wacky idea. It's it. They act like it's this crazy thing. Like, oh, what? Social pro, social safety net and programs and stuff. That's crazy. It's it like it's been tried. It's worked. It works. Exactly. What is the problem? There's so many examples all over the place that you can look at where this type of thing is successful, obviously, but they act like it's like there's no way this could possibly work. Oh, here's an example of it working. Here's another example of it working. I'm just gonna ignore all that. <laughs> They'll just go for whatever country. That's just some other place that's different than where, uh, we, you know, what we have here, so it won't work here. I've heard them say, like, oh, well, that's because those countries are small. Works in a small country, but somewhere big like yeah. America. Tiny well, they work. say that with health care, too. Uh, I work look, in look, look it's, it's been tried and effective here in this fucking country. Yes. Like, like the, the entire idea behind Social Security was like a safety net for old people so they don't fucking, like, you know, lose their jobs due to age and have to live under a fucking bridge for their, Which the by rest this of their way, short lives. By the way, this generation might not even get Social Security, even though we're so entitled. That's something that right. a lot of us are paying for that we'll never get. But we're and a lot of people. And a lot of people like this dude look at it and they go, oh, yeah, well, look, Social Security doesn't even work. Social Security doesn't work because you've defunded it and borrowed from it so many fucking times. Because you haven't treated it like what it is, a social safety net. But there's an example, like, I know my grandparents both drew Social Security and it helped them live out their natural lives in their home. Mine too. Yeah. You know? Paul, I got one word for you, buddy. Anecdote. Communism. Communism. Oh, okay. <laughs> communism. That was an anecdote, too, though. It was. An anecdote. It was, it was. Anecdotal, anecdotal communism. Paul but ain't got it, no it, facts. It goes from anecdotal when you look at the millions upon millions of Americans that have received that. And like you said, I mean, yeah, it's not a lot of money, but it's better than them just being totally destitute <laughs> under a fucking bridge or in a homeless shelter. Room at the top. No one is knocking you back down. It's also funny that you'd mention a ladder. Um, yeah, and you're but, so experienced. Because there's a great picture that perfectly describes socialism. Two Good men idea. are stuck in a pit and fighting over one ladder. What socialism does- yeah, I'm, I'm here. Uh, okay. Looks like our yeah. signal is okay. I don't know, it was probably just a weird- Cool. Yeah, hiccup. probably just a hiccup. We're back. We're back. We're back yeah. now, and yeah, I mean, the whole socialism is coming to cut the ladder in half. I mean, no, what, what it really is is capitalism is like one guy trying to charge the other guy to climb the ladder out, and it's like, this is my ladder, so you can't use it unless you give me 20 bucks. I can't I afford it. Too damn bad then, bitch. <laughs> I'm climbing the ladder, then I'm pulling it back up, leaving you to die. Socialism is when they're like, let's both climb the ladder together. So, you're wrong. You're dumb. What's next? Uh, let's see. What is this? I don't know. I'm a regular American. Cool. Over the course of my 54 years, I've lived the sort of life that many of you have. Cool. Is that Louisiana behind it? It, it? it very clearly is Louisiana. <laughs> well, the accent, too. I've overcame and failed again. Okay. I've known hunger. Sweet. I've enjoyed feast. Cool. I'm a street cop, an old soldier, a husband, a father, a Christian, Jesus. Irish and English and German. I like oh, chicken. This is fucking uh, riveting content. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what is the point to this? She has a good old boy speech. Yeah. I'm a fat ass. I wear beanies even though it's hot. Got long scraggly hair. I don't brush enough. Certainly don't brush my teeth. Enough. Only book I read is the only one you need to read. I'm pale. The Holy I'm pasty. Bible. I got fat man titties. It's like, what is this weird? I mean, who, who's this? What is this biography? Are we just gonna fucking tell each other about ourselves? Who Are you knows? fucking trying to proposition me on a date or something? What's well, going this, on here? This is some very Louisiana <laughs> political shit right here. Many American, regardless of color or creed. Despite our own individual heritage and culture, right? Okay, we know that's bullshit, dude. Every one of us 
through our lives and by our family's history has woven the thread that defines our flag. <laughs> dedicated life and limb and treasure. Oh, please kill me. Establish the nation we love. Oh, my oh, God. Right. Just people my brain, fucking my it. brain just well, fucking <laughs> turns off. As soon as people start with the fucking flag worship the, shit, the it's like, oh, flag. can we please... Can we please not? Nobody died for the flag, okay? The flag is just a fucking symbol of our country. Nobody, Nobody's blood was soaked up for the American flag. Yeah, it was, dude. Like, who's, who's buying this shit? Who's looking at the flag still? <laughs> a a lot of people in America. Unfortunately, a lot of people. Uh. <laughs> I love There's pl- I, I've met plenty man, of people right, that would eat this shit up. Liberal, conservative. Every single one of us, first and foremost, is an American. Okay. Uh. If you're listening to this message, what? if you okay. agree on a basic premise I've just stated, then please lend me your ear for the next couple of minutes. Oh, fine. If you can't even set aside your hate long enough to allow truth to speak to your heart, oh my all God. Right. Then by all <laughs> means, step aside, child, and let the adults work. Okay. <laughs> America is a nation built by imperfect men, driven by perfect intent. We've overcome every imaginable horror through our history. Some of it, horrors of our own creation. Okay. This is the way of a man's life. Roger that. My own is no exception, nor is yours. Oh my God! Get to the fucking point. Is the way of a a field of life. grain. America has never been without fault, nor have we ever claimed what? such a status. America has never been America without fault. Is Ever? Yeah. America's never done nothing wrong ever. Well, he's saying no. He's saying the opposite. He's saying that it's it's like yeah, like we've always had problems. So well, we we are good old Christian I mean, nation. I don't though. disagree. I just don't understand where this is going. Every well, fucking country has problems. I mean, if it was something totally straightforward and you know made a lot of sense, would it require this much build up? No, it wouldn't. No. All right. Very finest example. All right. Where does minutes. everyone think this is going? I think this is going to be like this is why we got to ban Muslims. You think so? <laughs> yeah. I think it's going there, but I'm not sure. What do you think, Scotty? I just think it's gonna be some religious bullshit, and, and you know, more, uh, you know, patriotism and religion mixed into one. Okay, let's see. Assembled that the world has ever established. American soldiers have died on every shore yep. to preserve our nation. Intact. Oh my God! Fuck the sun off! Never sets on American dedication. <laughs> yeah. Foundational sure. principle that yep. defines okay. our own Great. Wonderful. Under God. That all men are created equal. Yep. Okay. American citizens work tirelessly across the globe to Shit. bring relief to the poor. No. To bring peace no. to the siege. <laughs> no. To bring stability to the shaken. Please stop. And to bring freedom to the oppressed. Yep. Yep. That's Yet America. Now, our own nation is threatened. Okay. America is oh. in grave peril. Oh shit! Is it going to the seas? Refugees. And also from within. Yeah. The the elected Hillary. and appointed elitist few who have seized power in Washington have squandered our wealth, mortgaged our children's future, and betrayed our trust. Yeah. America faces The elected and appointed people who have seized power. No, they were elected to power. <laughs> yeah. Like, your, your, your sentence makes no sense. The elected and appointed officials have seized power. <laughs> no, we gave them the power, dipshit. Yeah, that's true. Our debt, even with courageous action now, our so-called leaders in D.C. have mortgaged our future for an entire generation yet unborn. Okay. Our once respected and feared status as the world's most powerful nation has been diminished. Okay. Our own- Show Ronald Reagan. Oh, of course. Yeah. Ronald Reagan had it all Dude, they love Reagan. Then we just fucked it up. <laughs> Republicans love Reagan. Our allies Reagan. across the globe no longer trust us. Our borders are no longer sovereign. Huh. Our cities are on fire. Our police are murdered in the street. Our history is being rewritten. Our veterans. Yeah, uh, actually, it was just it was just confirmed that the police violence against police is like down tremendously. Like it's it's been one of the best years you know, for cops I, getting killed. I, I think I, I'm pretty sure they kill way more civilians and uh, the way around. Yeah, they do significantly more. They way more, way fucking hmm. more. Interesting. Turn to a nation almost unrecognizable and are forced to battle the oppression of their own government. Our prisons overflow with poor men who have long ago hmm. paid their debt to society. Okay, I agree with that Meanwhile, part. Meanwhile, our nation is run by thieves, thieves in suits, yep. career politicians. That's true. no longer represent we, 
Okay. People. Then stop voting for they them. They represent strictly their own agenda, greed, and ravenous hunger for What pop. is your fucking point? I've often said in my career as a cop so many takes, that a man's too. character shouldn't be measured by how he falls. It should Ugh. be measured by how he stands back up. Girls, both foreign and domestic. Together, okay. we can stand this thing back up. Our finest hour can yet lay ahead. The threats we face oh are menacing and real. Uh. But an American nation standing as one is a force the world's evils cannot defeat. A force that uh. career politicians Did fear. I knew it. A force that every peril dreads. What do you that want? Foreign horrors like ISIS tremble before. Right. What do you, you want? You are that force. We are that force. Great. America's not done. Real Americans are not defeated. What we are, are you talking about? We are one. I'm okay. Captain Clay Higgins, a simple man. Okay. A humble American man. All right. From bended knee. Okay. I thank you for what you are. What was the point? My brothers and sisters all joined uh, by the bond of our spirit. What was the point? What? Uh, it didn't go anywhere. No. <laughs> there was no point. It was literally all fluff. <laughs> yep. What the fuck? There was no punchline. All right. I, I, I like how he. I like how he excludes a, a significant chunk of America in talking about what America is. Those of us that want to be under God. Those of us that still feel reverence when we, we see the flag flapping in the breeze. No, that. Well, what about me? I don't want either of those things. I want to live in a country that's fucking equitable. I want to live in a country where people don't fucking starve and, and shoot each other all the goddamn time. I don't want I don't want to revere the flag, and I certainly don't want to beat the fucking Bible. So. Oh, shut up, you goddamn socialist piece of shit. That was I guess horrible. you ain't I mean, talking like, to me. Go back to California, Paul. I will say that at least the guy had some liberal stances or whatever, but I don't know. It was, there was, it was like a lot of buildup to just jack shit. It went no nowhere. No payoff. No payoff. I don't even understand what the fuck. He's like telling yeah. us to unite, but yeah. unite to what? Yeah. What, are we, what is our objective? What are we supposed to unite for? I don't get it. Shit's fucked up. Unite. I don't. Okay. Unite and do what? Okay. Unite. I, I, I just, unite. <laughs> just unite. I just looked up. I just looked up America United to see what it was, and the first results are talking about the separation of church and state. So I'm sure that's not what it is. But the description of this video is still ambiguous. It says, "An American nation standing as one is a force that the world's evils cannot defeat. You are that force. We are that force. Real Americans are not defeated. We are one." And that's all it says. I still don't get it. Comments. Yeah. God bless America. Amazing work. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> I guess it's just supposed to engender a vague sense of patriotism. Yeah, I love the flag and shit. Yeah, those and days shit. are over, bud. Those days are over. The, I mean, there may be a few people, most of them probably your age, that are still waving the flag and weeping a single fucking tear. The rest of us are tired. We're tired of the bullshit. We're tired of being fucking shit on every time we fucking elect a, a, a politician to office. We're tired of watching the top 1% of people run away with the wealth of this nation. We're just tired of doing it, and and uh, there's no way we're going to unite under the auspices of some vague fucking, let's all get together, <laughs> sing kumbaya in front of the fire, hold hands with me, my brother. No. No, we're a little, we're a little far beyond that now, officer. Sorry. All right, uh, next video. Hey, guys, what's up? Josh Fierstein here. Here's the thing. Life is a long, life is a long. You know what? I feel it's bad saying this. I really, I'm sorry to jump in at the, at the top of the fucking video because I get this a lot. Is Josh Fierstein way fatter than you guys thought he was going to be? <laughs> Look at him. No, I suspect he was a fat tub of shit. No, he looks about as fat as I thought. We usually see him from the neck up or like the chest up. I think that's the problem with me is I've always done videos like this. And then when people see the full, like now seeing him kind of from the waist up, it's like, Jesus, Josh, holy <laughs> shit, man. I mean, I'm a fatty too, but I had no idea climb a constant struggle you're trying to climb the ladder to success or you're trying to get closer to god with a deeper relationship and and you find that every paul you're such a fucking hypocrite man because that whole time when we fucking when we saw those comments on my video like paul's a lot fatter than i thought you're like let's make fun of that in that video well yeah but I, now I'm, you're I'm looking at josh and you're like he's not fatter than i thought he was man it's true 
I was thought he was skinnier. Thought when this video started. Yeah, I thought he was way Dude, fucking the, the thinner than he is. The thought behind this video was Josh had to change a fucking light bulb, and it's like, might as well fucking whip some shit together. Yeah, I'll whip together some shitty metaphor about life is like a ladder or some shit. Step on that ladder. Every level, you're fighting another devil. And there's, there's, there's cool. always somebody that's trying to pull you down. And it seems like, like a video game. How is that like a ladder at all? If you're climbing a ladder and every step has demons on it and people are trying to pull you down, that's not a good ladder, dude. That's a shit just, ladder. I Damn, think Josh he is real is, fat, though. I think Josh Paul, is right. about as fat as I am. He which is. I, I, honestly, I didn't see that coming. Dude, damn. That's kind of crazy. Gumptious. Blubba gumptious, dude. You gotta put the L in there. The higher you go, the more haters that you get. There's, you know, it's like crabs in a bucket. People always, the moment that you start climbing up out of your situation. Wait, is it like crabs in a bucket or is it like a ladder? Because those are two pretty different things. It's crabs in a bucket on a ladder. Oh. Oh, shit. So that's your reward when you get to the top of the ladder. Crabs in a bucket. Yep. And going to another level, there's somebody always trying to pull you down. And it's easy a lot of times to react to your haters that are trying to pull you oh, down. Okay, I get it now. And want to get even with them. But here's the danger of getting even. If they're trying to pull you down, that means that they're below you. And if you're going to get even with them, uh -huh. that means that you got to get down on their level. And they've won. Josh is just That's so much better than all his critics. Of forgiveness. Because when you forgive somebody, you release a prisoner only to later find out that prisoner was you. Oh, so <laughs> what a twist. <laughs> do, 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 do. That's I a Twilight this. Zone Rod Serling shit, oh. dude. I hate it so much when somebody says the most cliche thing ever as though they said the most profound thing that anyone's ever heard. <laughs> Well, yes, this like, is man, Josh Gerstein's channel. Uh, what are you guys mantra. talking about? This is fucking profound. I am sold. Get on their level. Oh. Wow, never I never heard, heard anyone say that before. <laughs> totally unique perspective. Paying attention to the people that are hating on you and trying to pull you down. I've never seen it visually illustrated with a ladder before. Next in your life, I promise you this. It's going to change your future. God bless. Have a beautiful day. Please take a moment and click share on this video because no, somebody no one's doing needs that. to hear this message right now. So click share, like, comment, amen somebody below. If you're not my friend already on Facebook, click my name in the top of the video. Let's be friends. God bless. Have a beautiful day. America bless God. Hey everyone, I pray you're doing well. Uh, I wanted to record this video here as a follow-up to a video I just yeah. uploaded. If you didn't see it, I'll leave it linked up in the um, description what the section fuck? for you to check out. Pause this video. Is that a cat in the background? Yeah. It is a cat. Yeah, he does have cats. Um, did you guys know what culture revered cats? Egyptians? Egyptians. Yeah, and what it, what are what are they kind of oh, known for? The all seeing oh, eye of Horus. Yeah. Oh my god. Wow. It all makes sense now. Dude, fucking Mario was part of them, man. I've just known. I've known. Mario, we just proved Mario, you're part of the Illuminati. Mario is about to admit that everything that we used to say about him was true. Like, how about how he was, like, acting and, you know, he probably still smoked weed all the time and shit like that. But cool. now he doesn't see any error in his ways. Yeah, now. Before, when he said that he wasn't, you know. He that was, was a, that's all bullshit. That was a lie. But now it's yeah. the truth. But it's a video in which I confess that I had several times in my Christian walk, been living a double life. And I don't want to be doing that anymore. Just yeah, you to will, because you know it's bullshit. Just to over it. Uh, I was involved in some sexual sin, so... <laughs> <laughs> Mario, you didn't regret it. Oh, there's a cat. Oh. Cat. I like cat vision. This is cat's like, fuck this. We need more cats on this show in general. I'm allergic fuck to cats. Cat. I don't like cats. Cats are good. I like cats and dogs. Cats are, I, like cats are, I like cats. Cats are fucking unappreciative, dude. They are. Uh -huh. That's true. No, there's some that are not, though. Well, it, I'll tell you what, Jacqueline. You think they're sweet now, but if you, you know, croak in your fucking apartment and nobody finds you for a couple of days, they are going to eat you. I know. I'll be dead, though, so it's okay. Why wouldn't uh, they, man? They need a food source. They gotta Paul, stay alive. Fuck? I mean, Jesus. Dino oh, would eat you, that, Paul. Man. Dino no, would eat you in a second. Oh yeah, he Paul, would. No, Paul, he would. He's waiting for it, dude. He's waiting. When Paul came here and saw my dog, he admitted that my dog was cuter than uh, Dino. Oh, Hera. Yeah. It's got the fucking tiny factor that you can't fucking fight, dude. He's just itty bitty.
your Urshi yeah. or whatever it is. I don't know. Dude, I, yeah. I, I could just see I could just see Dinor like sitting there like looking at Paul, like licking his lips yeah, and shit. I like, can't like, wait. Can't wait till Dinor. that fat fuck keels over. <laughs> Dinor would sit uh like like by my side and starve to death waiting for me to wake up. <laughs> Fuck no, Dino would be feasting. He'd be like, finally. I don't, even, I don't even think Dino would wait, dude. <laughs> I think the second you were on the ground, <laughs> Dino would like co check your pulse. Like, okay, I'm not going to eat him if he's still alive. <laughs> nope. I mean, no pulse. A dog checking Chow your down. pulse. Chow down. He checks with his nose, man. He just puts his <laughs> nose up against his wrist, okay. you know? And, um,. Other things like that. I mean, I, I don't need to get into detail uh, you should, about Mario. exactly you all my sins, sinner. but uh, let's just say that TVC hasn't been the best Christian behind closed doors, and I don't want to be no like shit. that anymore. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm repenting. I'm openly confessing my sins so that you guys can pray no, you're for not. me. This is, Why uh, you, no, you're God not. Grace. No, you're this not confessing your sins. That, no, Go I was ahead, gonna buddy. say like he he just said I don't need to get into all my sins like you know you're not openly confessing anything you're saying I sinned I was bad that's so fucking vague what did you do Mario? Yeah, he was fucking the them bitches in the ass. Christians yeah. like to do this shit like they like to be like man I've been living a double life but I've recommitted myself to Jesus oh, I've yeah. given my life to Jesus again from henceforth. I will no longer have sex with men because that's sexual immorality. From henceforth, I will no longer drink and smoke <laughs> drugs. They love doing this. Like, I, I, think they, I think they fall below their own expectations just so they can do this. Just so they can say, I wandered from the flock and now I'm returning. <laughs> I love it. Love and mercy and move on with my life in a positive direction on the path that God would want me to. Cool. Um, but after uploading the video, I seen a lot, a lot of you responding and really posting some really good- He's lying, he's high doing this video. Look at him. Look at <laughs> Mario is fucking right. baked as All shit, right. dude. Um, people draw like like a joint coming out of his mouth. I would say cut out the Oh yeah, round. dude. Yeah, like put like some porn posters on the wall or something. <laughs> Fuck that, make Mario be in like a black light fucking room. Like, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, put put all kinds of immoral shit around him to signify his fall from grace. Replace that cat with a giant fat black dildo. <laughs> <laughs> Just sitting there flopping People around. Encouraging posts. So, uh, first of all, thank you so much guys for this being awesome. Uh, God's love and grace always pours through all of you and I can't explain how much of a great encouragement it is to me. What I wanted to talk about as a follow-up video is the shame that comes with living a double life. Okay, whatever. Who cares? Yeah, all right. Um, you want to do one more? Oh, yeah, you know, we're going to do this. No. Oh, oh my God. Fuck you, Ben. Oh. Fuck you, Ben. I wish Ben had AIDS right now. I do. He's dead. I wish Ben would just play this video. Yeah, Ben, we wish you were dead just because you're playing this right now. We tried to convince ourselves that it really wasn't our fault. I want to give a big fuck you to all the men who make my anger possible. Ben is a fucking sadist and a masochist. Here we go. Princess Peach speaks. Okay. Thanks, Mario, I guess. For fighting all those Koopa Troopers. And riding on the backs of dolphins. And traveling all the way to Star World. To save me. You keep saying it was a lot of hard work. How you almost lost all of your 99 lives. All right, lives. all right. Can I, can I just stop it here? Uh, yes. Peach, in, in, in more recent games, is a playable character that can actually beat the game herself. Um, so, not sure what the criticism is about here. Not sure what it's about anyway. Um, it's a We've video not, game. We have not seen this one already, right? No. Uh, it's in our intro, but I don't remember ever watching it. Okay. okay, Paul, but traditionally, that has been the game. In fact, by Mario 2, by the second Mario game, so this is not something that's just recent either. By Mario 2, you could beat the entire game okay, playing as Princess Could Peach. you do it in Mario 1? Yeah, and she floats. Could you do it in Mario 1? No, no, you couldn't. You couldn't. Oh, there you, you got go. You got me, Scotty. Sexism clear cut, Paul. You're a sexist. Okay, but I don't understand this idea, like... Okay, so Peach gets kidnapped, and then from her Peach's perspective, Peach is like, fuck you for saving me, Mario, so what? Are they saying Mario should have just been like, well, my girlfriend got kidnapped by a dragon. Guess I better get I a new girlfriend. I did not need a cis white man to save me. She can handle it. She's a strong, independent woman, dragon, <laughs> whatever. You know, I'm just going to stay home and let her handle it. 
It'd really be insulting and de denigrating to her if I tried to save her. It would be a lot easier for Mario. Mario, <laughs> just to make a game where the princess gets kidnapped and Mario just sits on this couch watching TV the whole game. From my corner of the castle, it looked a lot like adventure. Mm -hmm. But yeah. what do I know? I'm just a kid and caught up in a tree. I get to sit in this 8-bit castle. Guarded by that fire-breathing <laughs> turtle fuck. And I'm here, but however long it takes your slow shit ass to get past that fucking flying level. And now, of course, what I want to do is get married and turn into another... I don't remember Mario and Peach ever getting married. Yeah, they clearly did not ever play these games. They live... Uh, yeah. Yeah, they live in sin in the mushroom. Dude, it's, it's just some fucking... It's not even clear that they're, like, romantically involved. <laughs> it's true. Like, it just, it, like, I've never, you know, like, the most Mario ever gets is, like, a chaste little fucking peck on the cheek. Um, it's a minuscule part of the game. The enjoyment in Mario is not saving the princess. That's just the onus of why you're doing it. It's more For all levels. you know, Mario's just a fucking effeminate gay dude, and, and Peach is just like his BFF. You don't fucking know. They know, TJ. I've never, outside of, like, Rule 34, I've never seen Mario fucking plowing Peach. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> imprisonment called matrimony with, with you you whose brother wears the exact same outfit as you except in a different color like twin little fucking infants it's a cartoon isn't that Damn kind of the point only it's I've a got video to. game isn't that kind of the point you guys are bitching about a bunch of fucking pixels like yeah the second player in these games where they save peach is just the same dude with a green jumpsuit <laughs> Like, it's not really about, like, strong development of character. In fact, in the first fucking Mario game, you don't even know what's going on. You're just dropped into this world. And you gotta squash fucking Goombas and, and, and jump on a flag. Like, we're, you're reading way too much into a simple fucking game. Um, no shit. And not even reading into it correctly, either. You first. But, but your, your princess, princess is in another castle. Filing her taxes. Because she's a princess. And a hell of a lot more money than you. Um, like I said, they a hell never... of a lot more money. Just okay. show me, show me anything in all of Mario canon where Mario and Peach get married ever, and file taxes. Uh, um. and also, why would the princess file taxes? That's who they're paying the taxes to. Yeah, royalty doesn't pay taxes. That's kind of how, it, that's the point of being a royalty. <laughs> they're, they're exempt from all the laws. Mario, when she needs her toilet unclogged. She'll call you. Mario. Yeah, fuck you, Mario. Hey, 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 Barbie. While you get to be this well-developed girl with a, a bunch of different careers, I'm just kin. I'm just arm candy. What, what do I get to do? Drive the fucking pink Corvette to take you on another fucking date, Barbie? Is that what's going on, Barbie? I'm just a fucking man with a dick, Barbie. Like, when's the last time you saw Dr. Kin or veterinarian Kin? It's always beach, beach fun Kin or Kin in a fucking suit. It's almost like these companies are marketing to a certain segment of society. It's almost like, especially early on in video games, they were marketing to little boys who wanted to play video games. It's crazy. How, I mean, like, and how, I mean, like, this whole damsel in distress fucking narrative shit, it's like, what is Mario supposed to do in this scenario? Is he just literally supposed to say, like, fuck it, I ain't saving her? She hey, needs dude, to save, save yourself, bitch. Dude, it's not in such a PG way, too. Mario is such, like, a mild fucking game. It's not, there's no blood. The violence is like, oh, the, the creature's gone. It just vanished. It's just I mean, like Mario, it's just... Mario half the time comes across as, like, barely functional autistic. He's just like, it's a me! I'm a Mario! I jump on the turtle! It's like, I don't really see Mario fucking solving math equations or anything, you know? He's just kind of like, I'm just a schlubby plumber! It's like, what? Okay. It needs uh, these, to be a these... woman saving the man, otherwise it's sexist. That's yes. well, and and you know what the funny thing is is now that video games are 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 played by a broader audience, you see more and more examples of women taking the lead role. Just as you'd expect, when a company stops marketing exclusively to men and starts trying to bring women in, you see strong female characters now. These women are bitching about a game that was released well before they were born. At least the one on the right. Well, I don't know how old the the, the lady on the left is. But it, at least, like, the, the one on the right wasn't even born when Super Mario was saving the fucking princess. But your princess is in another castle! I don't know. 
preparing to inherit rule of an entire country? Princess, Princess Peach, Peach got work to do. Princess already brushed her hair today. Now Princess gotta make some phone calls. Send some emails. Get, Get her, her ball gown fitted just, just right. right. Oh, oh, you thought Princess was trapped by Bowser? Maybe Princess hired Bowser as a bouncer. Because she didn't have time to reject you at the door. What makes you think every time Princess doesn't answer, it means she needs your help? Can a woman get some alone time around here? To okay, it's, it's made pretty clear in the games that Princess Peach is not hiring Bowser as a bouncer. Yeah. Um, she's in being kidnapped games, she's, against her will. She's, she's kidnapped, yeah. She's being taken against her will, and she asks Mario to save her. So this little, this little fantasy Ooh. narrative that you've got, that, that Peach hired Bowser to take her away from Mario, doesn't really hold much water if you play the games. But that would mean that you play the games. Which you they don't. don't. You just you just you want to find something they, to bitch about. They don't know about. anything. Yeah, exactly. That whole that, that whole about. line about I'm sorry, Mario, but the princess is in another castle. Uh, to my knowledge, only really fucking happens in the first game, which I bet neither yeah. of these people have played. With her shit. What shit you ask? I don't know, body image, rape culture, motherhood, gender roles, the fact that no one will let her wear anything but a pink dress. You ride a dinosaur who comes what in is more Mario colors. Wear? I mean, I mean, usually cartoon characters are dressed in one outfit. Yeah, but like when you look at the, all the outfits they give Mario. Oh wait, no, he wears the same outfit all right. the time too. Like and most didn't they just make fun characters. of his outfit too? They just yeah, made they fun did. Of how he looks. So maybe he should make a. Somebody should stand up for Mario and say, you know, it's not fair that he has to wear the same outfit that these women are making <laughs> fun of him. He's a cis white male. He can. You make the fun of red Mario. shirt and the blue overalls, man. Mario found a look that works for him. Yeah, and he's sticking with it. <laughs> He ain't changing. Hey, but Mario has white privilege, TJ. You don't get it. I'm sorry. I would like to say, when I was a little girl, I liked playing with little princesses that wore pink dresses. I liked that. Does that make me horrible? I mean, that's kind of like what people like sometimes. Doesn't no. Mean no. You were forced. Monster. You were forced. <laughs> Internalized misogyny. I noticed you're, are you wearing pink now even, or is that red? I am. It's pink. It is oh, pink. More shit. misogyny right there. Why? Who forced uh, you to wear that, Jacqueline? Who forced society, you to wear the that? The patriarchy did it. I did pick it out myself. Oh see. shit! The patriarchy. <laughs> okay, Internalized misogyny, I suppose. There we go. Yeah. Internalized it's your guys fault. Misogyny. Uh -huh. Let's uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up. I guess. Wait, yeah. How long have we been going? I'm oh, not sure. we've been going for almost two and a half hours. Cool. All right, we're wrapping shit up. Uh, I guess we're gonna do a post show, Jacqueline. You don't have to stick around for that if you don't want to. But the show is over. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let us know subscribe. Uh, in the comments what you did and uh, subscribe to our channel. Manity shirt below. Subscribe to Jacqueline's channel is down below as well. Uh, all right, so that's that. Show's wrapped up. And uh, thank you to Jacqueline Glenn for being on. And thank, thank you, you to Scotty me. for not trying to take over the show again. You're welcome. Good night, everybody.